This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. Jeff, what are you doing September 22nd through the 24th? I'm going to the Cincinnati Comic Expo. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, Hobie listeners, Cincinnati Comic Expo returns to the Duke Energy Convention Center September 22nd through the 24th, 2017. Uh, great guests include Greg Capula, the artist from Batman, and, just announced, John Ratzenberger. Yep, Cliff Clavin himself. So get your tickets at CincinnatiComicExpo.com and come party with Hobie and Cliff Clavin and Greg Capula. More artists and guests will be announced on Cincinnati Comic Expo on Facebook. Get your tickets now. All right. Oh. It's about comic books, movies, growing up with Roku Suki. Superman before Zack Snyder ruined him. Man, that's so Michael Keaton was the best Batman, while Christian Bale was just deadpan. No one remembers the other ones. Princess Leia in the key. Transform a Lamborghini. Yeah. Please don't let child of the roof ever act again. Please, God, no. Remembering tales from the crypt. I back do. when Michael Bay wrote good scripts. He wrote scripts. All right here is old mystery. Cause it's the history of bad. It's bad. It's the history of bad. It's so bad. It's the history of bad ideas. It's the history of bad. It's bad. It's the history of bad. It's so bad. It's the history of bad. Ideas Podcast. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 168. One away from a good number. <laughs> sure. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm Blake. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for listening. It's a brand new spanking episode of Hobie without any guests this week. We may Fancy. try to get a guest. Oh. Yeah. We may try to get a guest next week. We we'll may try. try. We may try. It is episode 169. You know what that means. Uh, it's the sex uh, listener feedback sex uh, version. <laughs> so if anybody would like to send in some love questions, Dr. Blake will be in the house next week. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so send them on in uh, and we'll uh, try to answer your love questions the best you can. Within <laughs> reason, people. Within <laughs> reason. Let's keep it clean. And by clean, you know, yeah. love lines clean. I'm going to say the number one advice probably will half the questions you're thinking about asking See your doctor. That would be a good answer. That would be a good answer. <laughs> can we get Dr. Bednar on? I don't know. You can ask I think, him. I think we might. We may, we may have to bring Dr. Bednar in I think so. uh, specifically for this. But, you know, thinking of sex questions, mm-hmm. yeah. I read an interesting story yesterday Okay. about toilet seats. Nah, I don't know if I want to hear this, but go ahead. Uh, if you put... Uh, you know, the toilet seat paper down yeah. on there, or if you're like ingenuitive and put toilet seat or toilet paper on the seat mm-hmm. rather than just a little pa- you know, paper seat cover, mm-hmm. it doesn't protect you at all. I kind of figured. And uh, for all the women out there have been building up their thigh muscles for squatting, mm-hmm. uh, that doesn't make a difference either. Just, so I just learned by reading this article, just go ahead and sit down on the toilet seat. As long as it's not disgustingly filthy, as long as it looks clean and you wipe it clean, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I, I do the wipe clean on the toilet seat. See, I pee on the seat to get it wet and then wipe it clean. Well, you know, urine is actually very sterile. It is. And people don't understand this. Then I wipe it down. You're the Moises Alou of public restrooms. Yeah. That's very nice. Good job. You uh, know. Look him up. He's a baseball player. He used to pee on his hands. So yes. A so lot. so the old rumor about uh, toilet seats transmitting STDs mm-hmm. was actually invented back in the 1950s by husbands that were cheating on their wives. No. Because when they would pass on the STDs to their wife, you know they you know they uh, accused their wives of you know sitting on toilet seats in public. <laughs> really? Yes. Wow. The 1950s were not as nice as everybody thinks. No, they weren't. No, 1950s were terrible. <laughs> they Unless really you were. were like a white upper middle class man. 1950s were yeah. not a good time for a yeah, lot of people. Unless, <laughs> unless you were Dom Draper. Yeah. Are you trying you to know? say the minorities did not have a good time in the 50s? I, I, I am trying to say that. Yes. I would. I would. I saw Pleasantville. I, I, I saw that. So yeah, everybody yeah. remembers the 50s. I think you're right. Unless you're a white male, it wasn't probably yeah. a good time. Yeah. 
Women did not have many rights. <laughs> Women didn't have rights. Minorities didn't have rights. Gay people didn't have rights. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Gay people were not around in the 50s. <laughs> they didn't exist. No, no, no. no. Come on. Oh, the, they came in the 60s. Oh, did they? Ah! They're invented by they're invented by uh, Timothy Leary in the CIA LSD experiments. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Oh, but we've goodness. come a long way, babies, haven't we? we? I don't know if we really have. Yeah, we have. Well, I've seen the rest of the world. We've come a long way. We have come a long way, but it's kind of depressing. Always room for improvement. There's, you know, USA is 14th yeah. in happiness in the world. 14th. Uh, yeah, place. You, you know, a lot of that is uh, self-imposed. <laughs> well, Norway, Denmark, self-imposed Finland, depression. Iceland, they're in the top four. I find that hard to believe. Canada is two. Canada's All in the top five. All these are like s- s- countries that live in freezing cold. squalor. Exactly. Oh. Cold. But cold, I mean, cold, cold. They do yeah. pay about 55 to 60% tax. Yeah. But, on the other hand, they do have a lot of amenities. Apparently so, you can buy happiness. Yeah, maybe with your you tax. could. Yeah. It is an interesting debate that we will be on, Hobie, on uh, Soap Stump, Box. Soapbox, that's what it's called, Soapbox. down the hall, Canadian Podcast Network. All right, let me just say this. Uh-huh. Quality of life, mm-hmm. better mm-hmm. in Europe. Standard of living, better in the United States. Really? Yes. So which one would you choose? Uh, that's a tough one. I'll tell you what. I It is very tough. I do love... The modernities and the uh, quality of living, or the you know the the cost of living that we have here, mm-hmm. immensely. But then on the flip side, I love being in the high quality of life of Europe, and where you know everything's closed on Sundays. Really? Yeah, I try to explain this concept to my European friends with twenty-four hour stores, mm-hmm. and their whole question was why. I said, well, you know, when you're running around doing all this stuff and blah, 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 you got to go to the store. They're like, why? I'm like, yeah, you know, why? We run like our chickens, you know, head heads cut off here. Yeah, yeah. And we go 100 miles an hour, so, and that's basically how it is. How You know, however, because of that, we have, you know, higher, you know, lower cost, you know, better standard of living. Mm-hmm. However, it comes at the sacrifice of the quality of life. It's a tough call to make. It is a very tough call. I would probably do quality of life, especially lately. Yeah. I would go back and close everything down on Sundays. I'd, I like, pass a it. law, close everything down on Sundays. I say Wednesdays. Mm. Ooh, hump day? Yeah. Hump my day. Sundays. I close on Sundays. That's Wednesdays true. Wednesdays is a good day to That's true. Down. If we're going to be Mondays creating fantasies <laughs> here, might as well make it Wednesday. Yeah, right, right in the middle of the week. Middle of the week. I'll be honest. I think uh, there's been studies that four-day work weeks are a whole lot better for the employees than five-day work mm-hmm. weeks. I think there is something to it. I'm not now, saying... Now, is that a four-day work week still getting your 40 hours in, or are you no. just saying cutting hours? No. They said 36 hours is usually... They said 34 oh. to 36 hours is usually, usually the cutoff for people. So nine days for four days... Yeah. Nine hours for four days? Yeah. With an hour, the hour lunch in there, so yeah. you're still working eight, but yeah, you know. T- typical work week in Europe, even with salaried personnel, is mm-hmm. about thirty-five to thirty-eight hours yeah. max. Because there's... so, so if you're a professional out there and you have a degree, uh, my recommendation to you is go find a foreign-owned company, specifically mm-hmm. British or European, or Google, you know, and. Uh, Go work for them, and their expectations will be you work 35 to 38 hours a week. I used to work for a company in their corporate office. Now, obviously, it didn't mm-hmm. pass down to other things, but uh, you could take a 20-minute nap every day, and they had nap rooms, and they were like the massage chairs, and yeah. you could just go in there and lay. Mm-hmm. That, that sounds excellent. I went up there for training many times, and the one time that I was actually in the corporate office, the building in that, yeah. I did take a nap oh. after lunch. It was great. The, they do that at corporate, but not at your oh, local no, no, ranches. No, they're not, no, they're yeah, not okay. that down. Come on. Okay, yeah. Only mm-hmm. the people who aren't really working Correct. are the ones that actually yeah. get the But staff. I thought that was cool. You know, that, I yeah. thought that was nice. It's it, like, man. it is. We put, we put ourselves through more stress by age 25 mm-hmm. than entire... Uh, European demographics experience at age 60. Do you think that's because we see a lot of Michael Bay films? Do you think that stresses us That does stress me. And uh, James Cameron. Oh, yeah. Well, we don't see many of his films. They come out every five years. Yeah. (laughs) But when they do come out, they bring a lot of stress to everybody. Very very much so. That's why I'm just above the poverty level because I just don't get those jobs that stress you out. People uh, don't pay a lot of money either. There was a news news article that said... uh, 
a person making 75000 is pretty much the cutoff. After that, money really doesn't buy much more happiness. Like, if you make 75000 you're pretty much at the pinnacle of what money can yeah. do to you make you happy. You can be making happy. $3 million a year yeah. versus what you're making, and you're not going to be money, any better problems. off. No money, no problems. That's what Damon Wayans taught me. No money, no problems. <laughs> was Damon Wayans that taught you Damon that? Wayans, yeah. He was in That's right. Color, and he was in Mo Money. That's right. Money, <laughs> money can't buy you love, but it can get you the next best thing. Charity. And a lot of it. Mm, <laughs> come on, Charity. Come on down. Speaking of charity, we have shirts for sale. $12. Uh, co- uh, contact us at, at Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter. Direct message us. Facebook, message us at the History of Bad Ideas at hobiepod at gmail.com or email. Uh, $12. Uh, we keep $2 for shipping. That's the only thing we keep. Everything else goes to uh, the Disabled American Veterans Charity. Uh, it's a great charity. We looked it up and, you know, a lot of their money, I think it was 98% of their money goes to the charity itself. That's right. Uh, we have sold out half the shirts. We we have they are a nice what are they like a nice yellow gold yellow color. gold says uh, history of bad ideas with our logo on underneath the front. that that's right underneath that it says not a history podcast that's right so if you're wearing it people won't ask you history questions yeah well, they might they might but yeah uh, but if you would like one please let us know we will yeah. ship those out uh, and everything. you could you could pass yourself off as a historian oh you could and you could just lie and make things up. At the moment. And unless they prove you wrong, you're right. That's correct. Or you could do, that's an alternative fact. Just do that. <laughs> no, I don't support alternative facts. No. Can't uh, do it. Can't do it. Not going to do it. But no, if you would like to, please let us know. Uh, we have done pretty well uh, selling them. Um, yeah, we're, we we're 50%, them. Yeah, we're we 50 need... done. I mean, they make some great gift items. We have small through double du- uh, XL. That's right. Um, sizes available. That's I right. Believe, we're running on the extra large. They're getting low. Yeah. The double X's we have, and we're running on the extra large. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you can, Where's all our fat listeners at? Yeah. That's true. You can buy these for your lover Ooh. and have them wear it to bed as a nightgown, pants not included. Pod lover. No bottoms. Yeah. Tops only. It's a good charity, and uh, everything is up to date on every, uh, the shipments. In fact, everybody should have them by now. Yeah, so. If you ordered and are listening to this and don't have one, let, let us, us know. know. Or you could send a photo of yourself wearing the shirt, but, but blur your face out. R.J. Holt, Randall Holt, he did send a picture on Twitter with it. So if we you did one out. If However, if you have a sexy lover, include her full photo, please. Or his, if he has. Oh abs. yeah, well if his he has too. abs. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> model them as a nightgown. And if you go into, uh, if you t- tweet a picture of you wearing the shirt, doesn't have to have your face, just you know everything else. Um, if you do, let us know, and maybe you'll go into. Maybe we'll have a special prize for you at the Sensei Comic Expo in September. There we'll you go. Put you down on the list, or send it in with your top five requests. Ooh. Like come up with a top five, you know, topic for us. If you're tired of us coming up with them all the time, like and you say, hey, I got a top five. Why don't they do this? We'll go ahead and do that. I got a message from the intern. Yeah. Please, for the love of God, somebody send in some top five request. Yes, please. We're running low. As you'll find out in this week's top five. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. This was hard. I like this one. This was the most difficult top five I have really? ever done. Really? I had, I really had only four picks wow. coming in. I had to milk my wife for a fifth one. Whoa, 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 whoa. That didn't sound right. <laughs> I mean, I texted her. Oh, okay. I milked her brain for this. Okay, that didn't sound good that you were milking a wife. I don't want hey, that. She's got a History of Bad Ideas t-shirt. She, oh, no, no, no. That's right. I don't want to know that. Why don't you want to know that? Because I couldn't just picture Blake coming in just a t-shirt to bed. Just a t-shirt. Guys do not yeah. look good in just a t-shirt. I said this was for her. Oh, okay. Not okay. me. Okay, Whew. Blake has a small. Yeah, she burned it already. <laughs> How am I going to do that? <laughs> she, 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 she soiled her hands onto the shirt. And she's like, I've got to burn this. <laughs> she screamed when it touched her. Yeah, exactly. Ah! Blake or the t-shirt? Either. Okay. Oh, uh, Usually both. There's no difference. <laughs> I cast you away, demon. Get away. What <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> was it? The name of Christ compels you. <laughs> Has a little holy water. Yeah, she's and- throwing Nilla wafers at me. <laughs> Look, we'll get to that. I got a lot of shit on Twitter about this. I got a couple of people. I know. I- <laughs> Are you on Twitter yet? No. Uh-huh. I'm not. Okay. I feel like. But if I do, but if I do, I, I will. Not use my name. That is okay. for sure. <laughs> Good call. Good call. <laughs> Can we talk about, though, in sad news, Chuck Berry died. Uh, 
He was an asshole behind the scenes, everybody said. Really? Yeah, there was a lot of horror stories that he was not the easiest man to work with. Uh, just not, ju- not just because he was a perfectionist, but he was pretty much an asshole. There was um, uh, Hackford, uh, the director. Uh, he r- uh, did a documentary on him, okay. and he said that he was pretty much the most difficult person he's ever worked with, and that goes above even with actors. I think it was Tyler Hackford, okay. uh, the director, and he's done major motion pictures, and he said he was worse than actors and actresses. He was the worst person to work with, but he still loved him because he was just great. So... A little interesting, but he, Chuck Berry, Moment of Silence. Even I know Chuck Berry. Yeah. Do you think? <laughs> yeah, even There's I a know host of the Gong Show, right? Yes, that was him. Yes, that was him. Okay. <laughs> CIA agent. Yeah. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Do you think uh, Marty McFly, you think uh, he helped him in his career, or do you think that hurt him? Hey, Chuck. Charlie. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Since Chuck Berry wrote it for Marty to know it, but then he got it from Marty playing it, all these time traveling paradoxes are confusing. No, 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 they're not. Blake can explain. Oh. Blake, explain time travel. Time is a flat circle. And when you're driving your Lincoln. We've got a lot of complaints that you have no idea it's a Buick. <laughs> it's a Buick. <laughs> <laughs> We've had about four or five people try to just correct drive, us. Just drive my Lincoln late at night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pretend I'm Here's- in a Buick. Have you ever seen those commercials? Is that a Time Buick? Time is a flat circle. Is that a Buick? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, it's a Buick, okay? Everybody yeah. knows it's a Buick. You're 95 years old. Is that a Buick? Yeah. Well, because it has a Buick logo on it. I'll say, yeah, it's a yeah. Buick. I don't think any millennials are buying Buicks. If you are, please let us know. Well, apparently they are now. Well, oh. that's, No, that's what they're saying is why they're saying, is that a Buick? Because it doesn't look like your grandmother's car No, anymore. it does. It still looks like a Buick. It still looks an old looks like an Oldsmobile <laughs> yeah, still. It still looks awful. This episode is sponsored by Buick. Uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. I thought it was Lincoln. <laughs> Whatever. Time is a flat circle. Uh, let's do an up down for we the week. Said we met before. Can we do some ups? We we'll can again. do ups. Blake or Jeff, what's your name? Uh, what's your, what you what's your name? Yeah. <laughs> what's your, wait, what's your, what's your up? name? My, my up. Soundboard is... guy. What's your name? My up is. This weekend, I spent the whole weekend on the couch, and I binge-watched all of Iron Fist. Did you? I did. And? Oh. I think it's good. Uh, I, I know There was a lot of world-building, they said. Everybody's complaining and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, it's not as good as the others, but it still doesn't mean it's not good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, no. yeah Luke Cage and Jessica Jones and Daredevil for most of Daredevil was better, but I do think Iron Fist was better than the... Electra crap from season two of Daredevil. Now we we do have a news story about Iron Fist later. I saw that in news of the That's weird. Right. In news of the geek. Geek, and geek of, not weird. It is the weird news of the week. That was weird news of the week. Oh, news of the oh geek. yeah, okay. It does. That is it. a little weird. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I was reaching. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so did, did you feel offended by the cultural appropriation of the? Well, Asian I, martial arts by the white man. I didn't mainly because this is something that's been in Iron Fist has been around since the seventies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I'm just reading. And I'm just. I'm just quoting some complaints about the show. I'm know, like, it's like, really? Okay, whatever. I mean, I don't, like I don't Wonder Woman's armpits. You know what the fuck? <sighs> don't get me started on that shit. <laughs> yeah, people are fucking idiots. Um, so you liked it? Is he in his costume a lot? Uh, none at all. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Why the hell would you? That is a god awful costume, and no one should well, ever wear the collar. it. What is it? A gi? It's. I'll show you it. It's a uh, green. I suppose. Yeah, like a robe is, or whatnot. Okay. With a big, huge yellow collar and a yellow bandana around his top half of his head. I like the bandana. Oh. Bandana's all right. The rest of it's terrible. Dude, what is that bandana called when you put it over your head, over your eyes where it's on your nose, but you got eye holes cut out? There's is a there word. a technical I term for that? there is, but I don't know what it is, so I call it a bandana with eye holes. Well, maybe Big Dev can show it. You know. or it's a, one a of them. Cowl? You could do it like a that. Cow? Is that a cowl? Is that what that what is? Uh, a cowl? Uh, maybe kind of like a cow. Kind of. This is the one from Ultimate Spider-Man. I didn't say cat. Okay, I said well, cow. that's better See? than, but still. I'll show you the other I mean, one. well, that's what? he's. That's just a green shirt and green pants. Yeah. With the here's the, here's the old school version there, Blake. I'm showing him the old school version with the chest out. Well, that's completely useless. It cuts off all your peripheral vision. Exactly. 
<laughs> no, he's the right. Collars, yeah, the collars, yeah. The the collars so does. high up. Yeah. It's, was it's, that it's, from the 70s? Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Damn it. Did I you see it. the Luke Cage pictures from the 70s? No. Oh, I'll those are bad, too. too. Yeah, that's... Uh, Iron Fist was created during the Kung Fu uh, craze. craze of the 70s. Yeah. Luke Cage came out of the black exploitation uh, craze around the same time. Okay. And they ended up becoming partners, I suppose, as those crazes were dying down. The books... The Marvel put them together in books or what? Part of the cost reduction? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sorry, due, due to poor economic size. times due to, you know, Jimmy Carter. You We're know. either cutting you out or you guys got to team up. There's Luke Cage. Well, he's got like a, what's that thing on his head? A tiara? Why is it a tiara? <laughs> we don't know. It looks like an upside down tiara. It does. It's not good. I will say that. It's not good. I, I will say it's you not good. I mean, it's, a big head, it's a big metal headband. I mean, okay. Well, if he gets shot. And a just pirate like, shirt, isn't that pretty uh, nice? Uh, well, I guess it's good for headbutting. Yeah, he likes. He has bracelets. He has bracelets. He those does, are, like one those are called bracers. I used to go to the clubs with yeah. those. Oh, the D&D term is called bracer. You did? Jason. Yes. Wow. <laughs> you didn't know that? Nope. You went to the club like you that? You bought... Bracelet? No, 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 no. It was given to me by a girl I met in a club a long, long time ago. It should be on episode 169. Uh, <laughs> Talking about handcuffs? No, 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 no. I was like 22, 23, and went to the, you know, boom, 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 those type of clubs. And uh, this the, girl the that was The gay discotheques. Yeah, pretty Those much. were the best ones to go to, by the way. I was secure myself. Yeah, me too. But they had, they had the best music in there, You normally at those times. Uh, uh, any music that goes boom, 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 it's not the best what's music. The well, what's different. the go? What's the go? But anyways, anyways this girl go. gave me the bracelet. I used. To, I thought it was the coolest thing. I wore it all the time. And I had it on one time when I met my wife. Not the first time I met her, but... Down the road, and she goes, "What the fuck is that?" And I was like, "Oh, you know, we're going, you know, I used it's to my use manly it. bracelet." I used to use it in the dance club. She's like, "That is awful. Never wear that again, please." And then she would, she still mocks me to this day about it. <laughs> so I used to wear a nice little silver bracelet in the club. I really should stop talking. So, so how, how how long was it? Like long, like iron fist? No, no. Oh, no, it was a did it have tassels? Cage. No, it did not have tassels. <laughs> <laughs> they wear a collar shirt up. I couldn't see on the side of me. I just saw it straight ahead. Popped collar with his with his bangle uh, bracelet. His bangle bracelet and his like, midriff showing. <laughs> it's right. I, I was like a horse in a race. I just saw straight ahead. I couldn't see anything else. And then I used the re- the bracelet for. Re- Reflection, so I could see the back of me. I would put it <laughs> God, I should oh, stop God. talking about this. <laughs> you probably should. <laughs> I have a feeling Twitter is going to be ruthless this week. Right, Jason, Jason's gay discoteca days. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was happy back then. Did you have any glitter <laughs> on you? I didn't. Well, no. <laughs> I don't remember. I mean, <laughs> I may have been throwing glitter on me with the girls and that. You know? I may have been. Throwing my own glitter <laughs> around. God, I'm I'm glad I don't go back to those days. I'm very happily married. I don't have to deal with that shit. <laughs> of course, back in our day, we actually had back in our day. Yeah. We actually had to like. I used to have scripts written out for when I would call girls. <laughs> Not actually call girls. Wait, wait, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> For call girls? For call- yeah, yeah, scripts we for even call thinking girls? of that until you pointed it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, you know, the, what the worst part was is when you got the answering machine. Yeah. I mean, that's what you really needed the script for. Then you're like, abort, abort, no, abort. The, the worst part was when you got the fax machine. <laughs> never, she gave you a wrong number. I was going to say, it never, a bad number. It never a happened. That. Maybe. He got the fax machine once. <laughs> we had a friend who got once. He called it for two weeks. <laughs> He kept calling it back, saying, I think it's like maybe like she a forgot- second line and they forgot to turn off the fax machine. We're like, no. 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 I'm pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure they got the. She gave, nope, a she fake gave you a fake number. <laughs> Rob Otero for giving you a fax machine, though. I like that. Now, I would like have a script like of topics I would talk to, like if I really liked the girl. If I didn't, I mean, who yeah. cares? But like if I liked the girl, I would have like topics. And then. You That's know, why we have outlines every week. No. Yeah. <laughs> But nowadays, everybody just tw- uh, uh, text each other. Oh, or shit. Instant. Nowadays, you just hook up on Tinder, from I what know, I where understand. I we saw I had it. Exactly. I had a fucking bracelet to try to get a hook up. Yeah, you had to I call know. 900 numbers for sex party lines or something. They still have those. Yes. They still they have them. They still advertise them. I think exactly. you were over my house last time when they came up. and we Maybe. Said, yeah. How is that still a thing? Still a thing. 
Who calls them? Somebody. I guess, but... Perverts. You ever called a 1-900 Somebody number? Somebody that doesn't have <laughs> a credit time. card. Party lines. <laughs> but really desperately wants to talk to somebody so they'll use their parents' phone? I guess. Look out. Yeah. Uh, maybe. <laughs> well, you know, with unlimited minutes now these days. <laughs> I use my cricket or my track phone, so it should be fine. <laughs> or what? Oh no, my jitterbug. That's what it is. Jitterbug. <laughs> jitterbug. I miss those commercials. You don't see them as I much. I don't miss those commercials I love at those. all. The big old, the one for old people with the big button. Yeah, and... yeah. No oh, boop, boop. Calls four numbers that you can pre-program. <laughs> That's it. You can't call anybody else. I saw my mother-in-law's phone, and she, her text is like the old school, like. You know, font of 87. I'm like, oh my God. Like, you go blind just seeing a letter. So, she um, went blind. That's what she needs to put yeah, in. Yeah, you know, that could be the reason. You know, too. you know, you've reached a new age and a new era. I was with my mom and dad and we were cleaning out my uh, aunt's place. Mm-hmm. And there was a brand new AT&T rotary phone in a box. Oh my wow. God. Did you get it? We took it into uh, the, the eBay valet. Yeah. And the young millennial girl is looking at it. She's like, oh, my God, this is so cool. <laughs> You're like, you want it? 20 bucks. <laughs> Did she buy it? No, she's like, I wouldn't know how to use it. You don't need to use it. It's <laughs> That's a rotary phone. I was like, yeah, back in the day, if you wanted to dial, you had to put five, <laughs> one, <laughs> three, <laughs> Uh, I don't think you can use them. I mean, you actually, you know, I, I think I, I think for a younger person, your attention span probably is, uh, you know, <laughs> By the time shorter you than it takes for you to dial on your rotary phone. Forgot why you called. Yeah. No, I think, I, I honestly don't think you can use rotary phones anymore. I think you need a touch tone. I don't think the rotary I have no works. idea. It's I could a, be wrong. Dev, let me know if I'm wrong. But until someone tells me, proves me wrong, I'm right. Yeah, you can't use them anymore. You're right. It's a shame. It's a shame. Uh, I don't know who would actually want to, but anyways, that was good. <laughs> yeah. and so that's the end of the show. <laughs> Thank you for listening. We, t- we we got tired of talking about rotary phones. We went from Chuck Berry to rotary phones, <laughs> and we're done. And we're out. And we're done. Uh, one quick thing, uh, Sesame Street uh, ha- introduced... Oh, that was your up, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, we were doing up. up. Oh, what yeah. was your up? My up was uh, Iron Fist. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that is, yeah. Up. <laughs> My up is watching the March Madness Tournament this week. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. For people in the mid-90s that played uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown, mm-hmm. if you're one of these people, you can actually go Google an image and look at the, the little player character soldiers. Mm-hmm. The hairstyles in the mid '90s and XCOM Enemy Unknown are the hairstyles that are popular these days with basketball players. <laughs> and I, was, I started laughing my ass off when I started looking at the hairstyles. You know, where he got that short yeah. cropped on the sides and the back, and on top it comes, you know, splits out in a little Y. That's the hairstyles for your soldiers in XCOM Enemy Unknown in the mid '90s. Do you think the beards that everyone's growing now? Is now, that was an XCOM 2. Well, do you it, was, it was like 20 plus years ahead of his time. <laughs> do you feel like everybody's going to look back on this in like 20 years ago? Why the fuck did everyone have beards? I don't know. Like the 70s? Know. Like the 1970s? That's a good question. My question is, well, not even like the every 70s. other time didn't people have beards? The, in the 70s, it, people 80s. had real beards. You know, yeah. nowadays they got these goofy ass like Jeff. hair thingies. Je- Jeff's got a man 70s beard. Goofy ass hair thingy. You that's, don't have a goofy ass hair thingy. Jeff Cow looks right. like with his beard, he should be under a bridge. Yeah. I don't know if that's a 19... He's exceeded the 1970s beard. I, I think yeah. it's more of a 1880s. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that explains why I carry the axe around with you. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's it. You know, but no, it, 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 you know, last month I was in Columbus, and me and me and the, the uh, gentleman I went with, we went to, if if Ikea threw up a gastro brew pub, yeah. this is what it would look like. Okay. And we're the only two guys in the entire place, in this Ikea place, Ikea brewery, mm-hmm. that didn't have beards. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, looking around like, what the hell is this? Oh, guys, oh, all right. Uh, my up for this week 
Could you turn your phone on? I can't. <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of that noise. <laughs> I turned down every volume control I have. I feel like you're going worse code over there. I am. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, mine was Sesame Street because they did. They uh, introduced a new Muppet this week, a puppet uh, that has autism. So congratulations, they're doing a scope of the thing. Um, Whatever they can do to save their federal funding. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. HBO's helping. <laughs> but no, I appreciate yeah, that. Federal funding's pretty much dead. HBO yeah. pretty much funds it. Funds it. All right, there you go. Uh, but I, I appreciate them doing more diversity in that, and that's a nice thing because... <laughs> Muppet you know, Game of Thrones. <laughs> they they did going to tie Game of Thrones into the Muppets. Did you I see guarantee they did it. Did they did a Game of Chairs. A Game of Chairs. Oh, Game of Chairs. <laughs> and it was a Game of Thrones world where Grover was trying to uh, figure out who should be the new king. Oh, okay. And they played musical chairs. On awesome. the thrones. Well, that sounds like a legitimate way to pick it. It was leader. actually a great skit. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of funny. So I'm going with Sesame Street. Good job for them. So I appreciate that. That's very good. And down for the week. All right. <laughs> oh, never. Here we oh, go. I'm going snake draft. Sorry. Oh, Start. were you going to go? I'm sorry. Sure. Okay. I just go. hate people still. Same reason as last week. Still All right. Don't fucking hate, still hate people. people. All right. Good. I was going to say my down this week. I never want to complain when someone gives me like free food or anything. Uh huh. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I had dinner at my parents mm-hmm. and say, oh, yeah, what are we having? And my mom says we're having barbecue. Mm-hmm. And then we get fucking Sloppy Joe's. Sloppy Joe's is not barbecue. Okay. Don't tell me we're having barbecue and give me a damn manwich. Was it made from the manwich can? I don't know. You seem quite angry with That's... this. <laughs> when you get your heart set on a barbecue... Oh, isn't there barbecue sauce in Sloppy Joe? Yeah, there's barbecue sauce. It doesn't make it barbecue. I put barbecue sauce in a hamburger. It's not barbecue. I made some barbecue I in the crock pot a couple of nights ago. Was it real barbecue or yeah, was it manwich? I had beef chuck shoulder. Okay. <laughs> Cut that up. I had some barbecue, some onions, some spices, some rub, and then, yeah, threw it in there. So, but not Sloppy come over Joe's. House. I should have. Could have. I'm like, I was so excited to get barbecue, mm-hmm. and it was Sloppy Joe. I'm like, you know, gra- like ground beef. Student barbecue sauce. You know what? Let me help you. Next time this happens, you let me know. Next time you want some barbecue, I will get up my electric smoker. Fuck you, Blake. And I will smoke my you some barbecue. Smoker. All right. Fuck that you. doesn't count. Yes, it does. It's that a fucking smoker. That doesn't count. I'm still putting wood chips the in every 45 minutes. Smoker. Turning and making sure it's okay. Whatever. Fuck I don't know why it doesn't count. You throw some wood chips in your microwave, too, when you're microwaving? <laughs> <Not sometimes. laughs> Light them on fire? And put it in the microwave. You, <laughs> you get a nice cedar taste to it. Yeah, there it is. And a burned house. <laughs> Blake, what's your down this week? Asshole. Was, <laughs> well, the electric smokers are one. <laughs> but no, the NBA. I'm, I'm, I'm people bitching about NBA resting players. You know what? If their season wasn't 12 months long, maybe, you know, maybe they wouldn't need a rest. Yeah, if you don't. Make them play four or five road games in a week. Then I agree. Maybe you, they wouldn't have to rest. No, just up. because you buy a ticket and go to the game doesn't mean you're entitled to watch the players play. If you go to a musical or a play, they could have the main star sitting that yeah. night. Exactly. You could be there. You, yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Oh. So you, you you buy a ticket to a baseball game. Do you you stamp stomp around and protest because your favorite pitcher didn't start that game? Well, for us, the Cincinnati Reds will actually have to have pitchers. Yeah, that's true. Oh, we've got <laughs> pitchers. We've got about eighty-seven pitchers. Yes. All right. But you say you know same same thing. NFL. The guy's injured. He's not going to play. That's once a week. He you know, has a short, short time. A lot of times, yeah. Yeah, like everyone else that's like now getting else. it. Yeah. Or, you know, he's suspended for the first, <coughs> first four games of the season. Yeah. You know? I mean, I should, I'd be angry. I wanted to see Tom Brady play, but he's suspended. I'm glad they got his jersey back. <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw <laughs> Did that. you hey, see the video you, that guy wore? Yeah. Out? No, I didn't. Pretty, pretty nutty. They found he had, who else? Uh, Von Miller's. Denver Broncos. Uh, they believe he's got his cleats, cleats, yeah. or a helmet, and he's got a ring. He's he, apparently he's, he's, he's stolen a lot of stuff over the pa- over yeah. the years. He yeah, he kept going and stealing stuff from the locker rooms throughout the years. He's did, a, did we like, hear a name? All I heard was an accredited. Uh, yeah, he's tournament. a he's a uh, director for in he's Mexico. He's from Mexico. He's a director for like a La Pranza, but he's a, just just conveniently recently resigned a few weeks before this came out and got busted. Yeah. <laughs> but they also, he also had two, uh, Brady's 2005 jersey, I think, or something like that, yeah. or 2000. I was yeah. like, what the hell? 
But you know, I have some good news about Tom Damn Brady. Vision. You know what makes me feel good about it? What's that? Uh, Tom Brady had hair plugs. Really? Yeah. When did this happen? I found out today. Wow. He probably got him in college. Wasn't he balding then? I don't um, know. But it makes me feel good that Mr. Perfect's got hair problems. Ah. Kurt Henning? The wrestler? No. Oh, Tom sorry. Brady. I got hair problems too. It just keeps growing and won't stop. Exactly. Back everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere but the top of your head. Yeah. No, I'm no. joking. No. That's what usually happens. Yeah. Your, your hairline recedes in the front, but it kind of drops in the yeah. back, though. Your back of your neck and back. You know, and oh, that's a weird angel thing. And then ass and then. Yeah. Remember when the Jerry Rice, the wide receiver, when he went to Oakland? He had uh, cornrows, but they started like back by his ears. <laughs> he had no front Cornrow mullet? Yeah, he had the cornrow mullet. He had the bald mullet? The bald, the bald mullet front, guy? He had the cornrows in the back. You know, everybody's giving Tiger Woods a lot of shit, too. He, I yeah. Apparently he was at a press conference or a news interview without a baseball hat, and people were shocked. They, what? That he's balding? Oh my god, a man is balding? Yeah, yeah. I think pretty much. Tiger is just. I mean, I mean, his, his hairline is like the top of his head. Back he, he's on the Jerry Rice. No, no. Yeah. We've seen his father. Mm-hmm. His father wasn't like not balding either. Correct. I mean, were we expecting, you know, him not I, to go I think bald? just a lot of people are used to seeing young Tiger with a ball cap and when they see him in real time nowadays, bald and looking haggard. Does he ever get pretty on the shocked. golf course again? No. His I, his his back has been torqued so bad and he's probably been on PEDs for so long and it's probably just taking a toll on his body. Allegedly. Allegedly. So, my brother always wears a ball cap for the same reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so people bitching about the NBA. Okay. You know, but the best part I heard today was uh, um, uh, Harden. Uh, everybody was bitching because the Cavaliers rested Love, Kyrie, and LeBron for mm. the televised game on Saturday night. And uh, James Harden came out with a statement saying, oh, you know, I, I, I do this for my team. I do it for the fans. I play every game. No breaks for me. And uh, Stu Gotts uh, today summoned and said, yes, he can say that because he, technically he only plays half a game. He doesn't play defense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I thought that was the best quote of the day. I like that. It's like, yeah, you know, you technically you're only playing a half a game anyways. Let's get to the uh, Twitter poll of the week. Let's do the Twitter poll of the week. Now, was this cut off and finished before? Sunday night's episode. This was cut off before Sunday night's episode. I was going to say, if you're voting now, <laughs> well, you it's kind of obvious. You threw this out, what, like Thursday or something? I, did, I threw it out Thursday. Okay. You got a bad idea as a podcast. For, good for 24 hours. I did two days for this one. Two you days? Ch- yeah, you can change it. Oh, it was good for 48 hours. Ooh. For Hobie's latest episode. I voted on this one, and I don't know who any of these characters are. Good person. <laughs> Number 167, and Des Hassan's listener feedback. Who is the next to die on The Walking Dead? Uh, the options Who were, is next to die on The Walking this Dead? This was before Sunday. Yes. Options were Rosita, Morgan, Carol, and Sasha. Uh, tied for last place with 14% of the vote, uh, Morgan and Carol. I think they might die, but not yet. I think they got some time. Um, in first place, winning 43 to 29%, Sasha beat out Rosita. And that was correct this week. Because this was the most pointless death I've seen in the show. She's not she dead yet. Rail? She runs into the saviors. It's pretty much in uh, open cliffhanger. Open. She's dead. She's but we know she's cliff? going to die yeah. because you said last week. I don't remember. She's on she a new show. Oh yeah, she's, she's on Star Trek. Sorry. I don't know. I've had concussions. Shit, that was last week. <laughs> yeah, she's on Star Trek, so they said she's probably not coming back. The new Star Trek. Uh, let's do real briefly on The Walking Dead this week. Eugene is awesome as a bad guy. You know, uh, what uh, the the actor's name? What's his... Um, Eugene? Yeah, the I guy that does second. Eugene. Yeah. You know, actually, he plays Eugene's character down to a T, and it is pretty damn funny. I, I do you know, like him. Li- listening to his uh, voice on the radio... You know, this is uh, Eugene uh, Negan. Also, no, I am Negan. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty hilarious. Josh McDermott. Josh McDermott, yes. And you, if you hear him talk on The Talking Dead, he is totally different. He is nothing yeah. like that voice. That's awesome. Uh, I thought he was awesome as a bad guy. You know what? Keep him as a bad guy. Yeah. Let's not do it. And they're like, well, maybe he was sending brief message, you know, hidden messages to uh, Sasha and Rosita. No, don't no, make no. him. Make him a 
so. a badass. That was pretty funny. <laughs> he's like, I didn't ask you to come rescue me. <laughs> and he like runs away. He's like, you need to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. I'm, I'm out. out. <laughs> Stop looking at me. Uh, there was uh, not Daryl in the background when Rosita turns around. It was Dwight. Well, it was implied Daryl because you see his silhouette in the crossbow. But it's Dwight. It probably could be the anti-Daryl, yes. So the whole point was Sasha and Rosita basically have a suicide mission to go kill Negan by a sniper rifle. Because they were both former lovers. Of Abraham. Of Abraham. So they go. Yeah. And so they deal with that, you know, dynamic oh, just a little bit. God, I don't. But not care. really well. But anyways, no. go ahead. They get to this building outside uh, the Savior's base, and they have the sniper rifle up, and they have they can't get a clear shot of Negan. Yeah. So instead of sitting there for I don't know two hours, they decide to. Oh, we gotta go in now because yeah. there's Eugene. You traveled all this way. Wait for 24 hours for him to come out. Look for yeah, exactly. Look for oh patterns. Look for look for patterns. Look for, you know, does he come out at the same time? Does, I mean, that's not going to be the only time you're going to get shot at the guy. They're horrible snipers. They'd yeah. fail in I real life. I don't understand it. Your whole point of this was to go kill Negan. Yeah. And yeah. then you give up after like tw- ten minutes. Oh, he's inside. Well, I, what we, do you think he's going to do? Well, we tied <laughs> we tied knots in this rope. We're done. Yep, we're out. <laughs> See ya. I'm out. Oh my god, Walking Dead's rough. It is. There's some episodes like I just. Yeah. It wasn't a horrible episode, but well, well, Eugene's response pretty much saved the entire episode. Which one was that? What did he say? No, when he's like, I didn't ask. Oh yeah, when he, he's yes. like, it runs away. Yeah. yeah, I did like that. It was pretty funny. <laughs> and he looks badass. In the with, with his little jacket. stuffed monkey hanging out of yes, the pocket. You like yes, that? that's I awesome. like how they're putting all the metal on the zombies against the fence. I like that. Well, covering their head. Yes. To so protect them from the brain trauma. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's goofy. It is. But it's awesome. It's yeah, just, it is. He's a mad scientist the Nazis like used to employ. If yeah. you look at that aspect of it. True. Uh, I do like that uh, Gregory's going to get so fucked. When he goes up and sees, uh, what's that guy's name? The guy with the nice mustache. Uh, who's you know was talking to him? He said, "Hey, why don't you come to the gates?" Uh, yeah, the uh, the enforcer. Yes, the, I, yeah, the Negan's enforcer on the hilltop. I like it because he's like, "You come up, we'll have some tequila." He is so dead. He is yeah. so fucking dead when he comes up there. Uh, I don't really care. I thought Jesus was. I like Jesus. I, he's going to be the new friend to Jesus Maggie. was gay. Yes, and he was in the book too. He was. But I like how they did it. Really? It, it, they made it by the norm. book. You mean the Bible? Yes, no. yes the Bible. Oh, okay. Oh, I get in trouble for no, Nella wafers, but you're calling Jesus gay. Yeah. No, you called him gay. I just I'm heard you Jesus say from it. The Walking Dead. Stop it. Oh, we're still on that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Zoned out a while no. ago. Mute your, mute your mic. It may have <laughs> treat treat it like as they should. Just a normal. It was normal a normal thing. conversation. It was normal great. conversation. Exactly. Uh, what else happened this week? Anything else? I kind of was in and out this week with it. I was kind now, of... That's, that's pretty much it. That was the big thing. It was... Uh, Everybody's like, oh, Jesus is gay. And, yeah, and... And, Rosh, and then Sasha and Rosita's goofy stupidity and, you know, we're going to go snipe. All right, we're done. Yeah, we got <laughs> bored. Eugene, classic. I felt like they played it like a 10-year-old kid on Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to go snipe these guys. I got a sniper rifle. I'm bored. I'm just going to run into the melee. Let's go, yeah, Let's exactly. go melee. Woo! Exactly. <laughs> I Pretty can't much. hit anything. Uh, I do think the next two episodes, because there's two episodes before the end of the season, yes. uh, they go to the waterfront area or whatever that is uh, with all the women. I'm intrigued how that's going to go oh, the, over. The Amazon camp? Yes. Yeah. And then they're also going to go to uh, the junkyard again. So. Yeah, I think it's going to end with them getting ready to raid yes. Negan. Yeah. And that way they got a cliffhanger until next season. Yay. Yay. Uh, do you care about Fear of the Walking Dead? Actually, you know, I was I was looking at the episode previews and I got, you know what? I'm not really there anymore for it. Yeah, I'm thinking I, I may watch the first episode, but I don't know if I'm going to really do. I it. may I may hate watch it because I've got two seasons invested in it and just just <laughs> see how it works out. You know how it goes. Yeah, I'm saying when I'm like, God, I got two seasons. I don't. I can stop now. I can stop for eight now, more but, seasons. I'm fucked. Uh, but I need to know what happens. Uh, speaking of hate watching, did you see the uh, Big Bang Theory has two? We got signed on for two more seasons. No. <sighs> oh well. Jesus, stop it, people. Uh, Jeff, you can come back now. Hi, Jeff. We're done with the dad. Yeah, sure. Let's get some listener feedback, Blake. Take it away. 
You know, we're coming up to uh, this part called Listener Feedback. Ooh, I've never heard of that one before. Yeah, you know, we love our listeners so much, we actually devote a third of our show to them. Yeah. Pretty Not much. more. Yeah, so if you're listening out there and sent feedback in, thank you. If you never sent feedback in, that's okay. You can keep listening. Yeah, you're allowed to listen. You're allowed to listen. Feedback. Yeah, exactly. But you might get shout out if you give us some feedback. You would. That's People true. People love to be, hear their name on podcasts. That's Just right. You know, you know and Joey, uh, Michael, Timmy, Tom, Jofa, Joseph, and Josiah. Yeah. Oh, what are you a Duggar? <laughs> I may have. I think I did do some of the Tucker names. <laughs> Could be. But, you know, if you like the podcast and you think we're funny, or we, we at least fill your uh, drive time into work and afterwards, mm-hmm. you know what you should do? You should tell a friend and uh, have them download and listen to us. And then after that, apologize. Uh, tell them write a review on iTunes. We no, that. you apologize <laughs> for having exposed them to this program. Uh, That's right. Not a history podcast. That's right. Anyways, we start out with our listener feedback with this guy named Doug. Number one fan, Doug. Can't give yourself a nickname. He, uh, he's got a long, long submission this week. <laughs> he says, will there be in-depth analysis of this? Okay, here we go. He says, uh, Monopoly said goodbye to the boot, wheelbarrow, and thimble, which symbolizes uh, soup, flavored in, soup flavors in the Depression, the boot. Huh. Wheelbarrow, you know, shout out to our agricultural history. Mm-hmm. And Thimble, uh, shout out to uh, females' roles in the past. Mm. Tokens this week after a vote by fans of the board game that was held in January at VoteMonopoly.com. Voters were faced with a choice. Should Hasbro, which is an evil game company, by the way, after they bought Wizard of the Coast and forced them to update to 4th edition D&D, replace some or all of the traditional game pieces with more culturally relevant items like a hashtag, emoji, or a computer? If they fucking did an emoji, I would be out. What the yeah. fuck? The good news is... The voters weren't stupid enough to go for hashtags and emojis. Oh, and I really wanted the hashtag. Yes. So more than 4.3 million votes uh, split up between uh, apparently 20 people that kept voting. <laughs> uh, determined the newly configured group of eight. So the new ones are first. A T-Rex. <laughs> a rubber ducky. <laughs> and a penguin. Do you get a penguin? Yeah, the penguin. Well, actually, the T Rex looked out of place to me. The rubber ducky, I think, is a good one. I like penguins, so I'm thinking I like cool. penguins too. The T Rex but... doesn't seem to fit with the other things, but I why wouldn't they just pick like a Coca Cola bottle and a polar bear or what the hell is a penguin? I mean, what the hell is a penguin? Rub- it's an Arctic well, bird, yeah, that doesn't fly. Well, you know what? They're always. Dressed pretty snazzy, but they're cute too. Yeah, but what's the cultural relevance? To I have no that. idea. I mean, like ten years ago, they did a fucking kitty cat. I I understand the T Rex because people like kitty cats. Yeah, I, the I, cat I, replace the iron. Oh, I'm fine with that. Yeah, so yeah. you can't pronounce that piece yeah, anyway. Yeah, fuck that thing. Iron. Yeah, yeah replace the uh, the dom- domestic iron. labor piece. Iron. Yeah, but uh, the T Rex I understand because of the dinosaur fad in the past twenty iron. years. Jurassic Parks and all that kind they of... They have tiny hands. Arms. The Rubber Ducky. Rubber Ducky. That's the only reason the I could one. think of it from Sesame Street. Sesame Street. Because it's cute looking. That's the reason people, people voted for because they thought it looked cute. Maybe it's from Penguin from the Batman movie. Oh, Batman Penguin. Returns and Penguin and the Rubber Duck because he was in one. Yeah. They're pe- big fans of the Batman Returns voted. <laughs> 25 years later. <laughs> yeah, it could be. All right. So we're left with one original piece now. Well, the, the T-Rex, the Rubber Ducky, and Penguin will join the five classic tokens. Scotty the Dog. I like Scotty. The Hat. Mm-hmm. That's the original that's still in there. The Car. The car wasn't. The car was car original. Wasn't wasn't original. It no. came uh, oh, about ten years after. Right. Okay. The cat and the battleship. When did the battleship get joined? I thought the battleship, the battleship was, was already original, there. and then it disappeared, and then they brought it back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, During the anti-war '60s period, you know, they had to get rid of the battleship because you know. Now with the Supreme Evil Order, we brought yeah. the battleship back. Oh yeah. Well, the race car came Twofold. in like about thirty-five. Oh, okay. It started in the early. Or the mid twenties, I suppose. I thought yeah. Scotty the dog like would the, be a the golden too. age beginning of racing. Oh, Scotty yeah. came a little bit late. Now he's older than us. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, well, speak for yourself. You're a lot older than me. Well, yeah, but fifties. <laughs> Scotty came in in the fifties. Oh, the the era of great equality for everyone. Scotty came in with the wheelbarrow. Okay. And, and the horse and rider. No, the wheelbarrow. Is oh, the I new, remember oh, the yeah, horse and rider. Yeah, the wheelbarrow. Yeah, okay. I, I do the remember the horse ride. That yeah, was, that was I liked one. that one. But always, you always thought it would break off at the bottom, like the leg. When it was, you always mm. kept worried about it. That, I forgot yeah. about that. Bring that guy back. I like that one. Well, we thought, you know, there you go, Doug. There you go. That's right. There's not really in-depth analysis. That's right. Yeah. Boot, flavor of soup, and the depression. 1999, apparently they brought in a sack of money token huh. that disappeared like two years later. Uh, that worked out well. I'm, I'm like going through these, and I'm like, sack of money? I don't remember that at all. Yeah. I feel like if Hobie had a Monopoly game, like a version of it, we would probably have a guy uh, like... A uh, hiker, a mountain hiker, like for Worsley, like from uh, like from the Price is Right, the Yoda Lee guy. <laughs> yeah, the Yoda. 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 No jacket, no jacket, but no oh, jacket. No, 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 no. He's probably probably wearing a uh-huh. wife beater or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. I think he'd probably have a uh, a little uh, pewter kitchen sink. Ooh, for, but yeah, because he got shit in it. Because he got a shit in it. That's I right. Like could that be one. funny. I like That's that right. one. Um, what else? A do comb we have? for Jeff's beard. A comb. I like that. Comb for Jeff. Pez. Pez. Yes. Pez. A little Pez or a Pez. Or a little Pez head. Machine. Pez machine. A little Pez machine. A little Pez machine. Four. But what would be the little Pez machine? A broken light bulb. There you go. A broken light bulb. Or we want to have a broken light bulb. I would have a broken light bulb. And then we'd have like a little, a little listening ear device. Oh, like headphones. Yeah, like you headphones. Ear earbuds. So <laughs> that's six. A microphone. Microphone, that's seven. So we got one more. I'd say a fist for Fisto. For Mr. Uh, Fisto. Uh, no? Yeah. To all of Mr. Fisto, maybe, but not just a okay, fist. Okay, not a fist. So we got one more we need. A beer bottle? A little Batman cowl. Ba- oh, that's copyright issues. Yeah. Oh. Copyright issues. A comic book, maybe? A movie? A VHS tape. VHS tape. No. Or a cassette tape. How about a little iPod? That's nah, with the headphones. No. Listeners, iPod slash headphones. I could see those together. Mm-hmm. Listeners, let us know what our eighth piece would be. The or Hobie or come up Monopoly. with your own eight pieces for yes. the yeah, we need Hobie that. Monopoly. We need to do that as a poll, Twitter poll of the week. Just throw things out and see what I like that. people like better. I like that see one. what people say if they're still listening. <laughs> they haven't tuned us out yet. <laughs> And a cat, because you always got to put in a cat. No, no. For those people who just have us on in the background for noise, you know, white noise while they drive or work, you know. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I think people are upset. Why aren't they talking about Charles Dickens? I thought this was a historical <laughs> literature <laughs> podcast. We did. We, we talked about the wrong book <laughs> and the wrong characters for, what, 20 minutes? Yeah, it didn't work out too well. All right, next one from Nick. He's the, he's the Hobie Gimp. Bring out the Gimp. Uh, we haven't heard from Nick in a, a while, have no, we? No, we haven't. But it's nice yeah. to hear him. You know why? Because he's late. Because he's catching up on Hobie and listening to the Valens Di- Valentine's Day episode. Mm. He says, Grater's Cheese Crown Ice Cream is the best with raspberry chocolate chip a distant second. Talking about local uh, Grater's, uh, there's ice cream store. It's the they're local been... ice cream barons yeah. here in southwest Ohio. But they've they're the best. It. Mm-hmm. They are pretty yeah. good. And um, black raspberry chip, uh, chocolate, yeah. the raspberry. The raspberry chip. chocolate chip. Yeah, that's, that's mine. Yeah, it's that's a very popular their, flavor. Their, uh, uh, oh, no, I forgot the word. It's popular. For. I, I, yeah, something like that. What they're well known for. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. It's not the word I was looking for, but we'll go with okay. that. Okay. <laughs> I never heard of cheese crown ice cream. I've never heard of it before. Neither either. have I. I'm kind of intrigued by it. I, I'm gonna have to check it out. It's actually just a wedge of cheese. Yeah, I'm like, what? I'm Frozen. not sure what type of cheese. Maybe it's like cheesecake ice cream. Ice, yeah, cheese crown. I'm like, is it like sharp cheddar in your ice cream? I don't know. Is it uh, cheese with parmesan? Oh, so they mozzarella, they parmesan on top of it. For yeah, you? then you get your little bowl of ice cream. They break out this big uh, cheese grater. They're like well, t- parmesan. <laughs> parmesan. Parmesan. <laughs> Tell us <laughs> when to stop. <laughs> I feel like it would be pepper jack iced. Maybe just pepper jack and mm. frozen. Frozen no. pepper jack. Mm. <laughs> it's good. Maybe it's skyline cheddar. Oh. <laughs> extreme. So, right. so, yeah, what the hell are you talking about, Nick? <laughs> so, hopefully, in this next week, I'll get a chance to try this cheese crown and 
him give him an opinion. So okay. approximately in five weeks, uh, <laughs> Nick will answer our questions in the next listener feedback uh, two months from now. Jeff will have another heart attack by the time exactly. he finishes the cheese crown graters ice cream. I want to go from uh, Nick with an N-I-C to Nicky with an N-I-K-K-I. Nicky! Hooray! Our favorite kiwi. Our favorite kiwi. She says, have you guys realized... That Barb from Stranger Things was on Riverdale yet? Nobody has said anything. I surely thought someone would mention it. Clearly, Riverdale is the upside down. I have not noticed it. She's the friend uh, that was uh, slut-shamed with the maple syrup. She's one of the friends. Oh, that was Barb. Okay. I'm like, I don't know who she was. Is she wearing her glasses? I was like... She was not wearing no. her glasses. Uh-huh. As soon as Nikki said that, I was like, son of a bitch, that is right, her. I'm like, Betty? No. Veronica? No. <laughs> uh, what's her name? Cherry? No. <laughs> they love their maple syrup in Riverdale. They do. Well, I think they live in the maple logging area. Or Who doesn't? It's Canadian. Uh, what else we got? Uh, good news. We have corrections from Dev. Big Dev the Psy Guy. Dev, 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 Dev. Big Dev the Psy Guy. Dev, 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 Dev. Dev says, <sighs> It's Carrie L. Wes, like L. West, but you got lazy at the end and dropped the T. Because Carrie L. Wes is going to be at the Cincinnati Comic Expo in. September 2017, September 22nd through 24th. They sponsor us. And uh, real quick here, uh, we thank you, Dev, for that correction. I think you're wrong, though. Uh, we also got a lot of new ones. Uh, artist Mark Kidwell is going to be there. Uh, just let everybody know. What does he do? Uh, he artists. <laughs> thank you. That was wonderful. <laughs> there. If you're going to plug somebody, at least know what the <laughs> fuck they're there for. Uh, they art. He is a co-creator. <laughs> of writer. what? Would you oh. shut up? Let me finish. <laughs> He's co-curator of the Vietnam uh, zombie epic 68. There you uh, go. Uh, let's see. He's also illustrator, creator of Bump. Uh, he's also, let's see, we also have Craig Boldman. Uh, he's going to be there. Uh, he's known for his work on Archie Comics, baby. All right. Well, I want to get his uh, take on Riverdale. Uh, Andy Bennett will be there. Uh, he's done his uh, love uh, artist. He's a freelance artist. He's done work with Marvel, DC Comics, Moon Star Books, ID- IDW. Um, so he's been around for a while. And Daryl Banks will also be there. We actually, I actually talked to him last week or last year. Uh, he is. Uh, he does Green Lantern. Uh, he also did Wild Wild West, Cyberpunk, and the Justice Machine. Wild Wild West. Uh, Dave Aikens will also be there. Uh, he's done SpongeBob. Uh, so Dora the Explorer. Uh, he's done a lot of the art on those. And so uh, just want to let you know. And also, don't forget, Jolene Glover will be there, too. Yes. So, got some good. And John Ratzenberger. You can never forget John Ratzenberger. Tickets to sign There you That's go. That's right. There you go. Thanks, Dev. Yeah. So, Elwes. Elwes. Dev. You know, Dev is the Brute Squad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more corrections. This comes from Besotted Greek, or Besotted Geek. He says it's. Nilla wafers, Brigger, you heathen. Not vanilla wafers. Nilla. Well, the brand name is Nilla wafers. What they are are vanilla wafers. Oh. This refers to. We uh, just had a correction on a correction. I'm correcting it. It's because well, we we weren't advertising the brand, so we were just going with the generic term. This goes back to uh, my. Uh, Mocking of the Eucharist, or you mocked? I didn't mock it. I just said those little things are taste like vanilla wafers or Nilla wafers. So, um, apologize well, for it. You know, if there. they did give out Nilla wafers, With I would, I would, I'd go through the, the Eucharist t- line twice. <laughs> time out, time out, time out, Jeff. <laughs> I'd go there more often. Let's, yeah. Let, let's think about Jeff's <laughs> logic here. If they gave out Nilla wafers at the Eucharist, I would go back to church. Or you could go to the grocery store and spend two twenty five and not waste. But it at now. church, it's free. That's right. And you get wine. Well, yeah, you can wash it down with <laughs> sherry sometimes, depending upon the wine. You know? I would need like some dip. Right. Like, maybe if they gave you milk instead of wine to dip it in, that would work. Ooh, holy milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. I think yeah. I think that's a different... Uh, it, it's not the and, blood and of Christ. You know what? I mean, and you know what? It's the, the milk, milk of Christ. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? And they throughout the year they could change it up. Sometimes they'd have holy Oreo cookies. 
<laughs> you know, dip it in the milk. You know what? I, you know, I've been complaining that the Catholic Church needs to modernize uh-huh. for several years now, and I think we've just found a way. Cookies. Nutter butters. Milla wafers. Ooh, nutter butters. Nutter butters. Oreo cookies, depending upon the time of year. We Does can actually time it. So they actually look like uh, oh, humans. Oh, God. Figures. No, yeah. stop well, it. Sure. <laughs> stop it. You know what? And we can, you know, based upon the holiday that's coming up, we can <laughs> actually, you know, change the cookies to match for the Eucharist. <sighs> for St. Valentine's Day, it's a figure with the heads off. It's a no oh, life or just without the head. St. Valentine's. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a heart, yeah, but true. in shape of a human heart, yeah. not the heart shape. Oh, you could do that, too. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Please send your complaints, well, too. <laughs> do we, Jason and Blake and we don't want to scare the off. children off. So, you know, for like St. Patrick's Day, we probably would have like uh, cookies. and, and Shamrock from, shakes yeah, from Nilla's, McDonald's. Nilla wafers. <laughs> oh, shamrock yeah. shakes. Shamrock, is, is, shamrock yeah. shakes. Or, you know, shamrock wafers. Nilla wafers. Not like oh, yeah. The, the, those frosted cookies with the green yeah. frosting on them. Yeah, yeah you know. That. And the Catholic Church can take Halloween back with uh, the Oreo cookies with the orange cream center. Oh, those are awful. Uh, no. You know? No, I'd say you got to get the pumpkin cookies. Or the pumpkin cookies? I don't cookies? like anything okay. that messes up your teeth, like with mm-hmm. or colors your teeth. Ugh, no, that. I've got wow. it for Easter. <laughs> for you. Easter, it is the Peeps Oreo cookie. They have a Peeps Oreo? Yes, a kind of Peeps wow. Oreo cookie. Where or the, you can just do Peeps. The Peeps Center with the Oreo cookie. <laughs> or just do Peeps. Or just do Peeps. You're right. I, or you can do a cat. That's the body of Christ. That's a bird. It's a Peep. <laughs> no, it's a dove. Oh, it's a dove. It's a dove. Oh. Yeah. Or you could do a Cadbury egg for Easter and have a figure of Jesus in the middle because he rises again. See, there true. He but those would be banned in the U.S. because he can't yes, have he toys can. inside the eggs because <laughs> it's choking true. hazards. Because yeah, we're stupider than Europe. Kids. That's right. <laughs> well, I probably wouldn't be surprised by that yeah. number. I like the I like the peep as a dove. Isn't that the Holy Spirit? Yeah, the Kinder. <laughs> How come Kinder hasn't sold this to the Catholic Church yet? <laughs> Because the last time, oh, time the, the last time the Germans got involved, oh, in there was a huge Protestant revolution. Church. Yeah, you're right. Did you say Tinder should sell this to the church. Kinder. That's a fun way of doing <laughs> no, it. Kinder, Tinder, Tinder, matching priest with altar boy since oh. 19. 19- oh. <laughs> if we weren't going you, to hell now, yeah. we sure as you, hell you were now. giving us grief for what we oh were talking God. about. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Send your complaints wow. to Jason. <laughs> At Graphic Novice. Yes. <sighs> Moving on. <laughs> Can we get off the subject? <laughs> like, oh, uh, let's go to uh, Desmond Hassing. <laughs> For once, I don't think I've ever seen Blake speechless. <laughs> oh, I know. Des, please save us from ourselves. <laughs> Des says, has Bregger. Already declared his love for the Power Rangers movie. Dear God, no. I have. Don't know how you people don't like Power Rangers. We posted a. I posted an article today about uh, how it's a weird movie. Was one of the reviews. Not bad, just weird. weird. (coughs) Pardon me. And I've never seen so much like quick response to it. Like. It's going to be awesome. No, it's going to be great. And everybody was like, I was. I wasn't saying it was going to be bad. I'm just saying it was a weird review. Just still have, have to see the movie to give a final review or whatever, but I'm just saying it looks like they took out most of the cheesiness, and it looks like it might actually be kind of cool. I hope Not it as is. cool as that uh, that film that was out about two years ago. With James fan, Vanderbeek. Yeah, that fan-made film yeah. that was great. Yeah, that you can't find anymore. Have, have you seen the, the parody on Facebook that came out this past week? What's the guy's name? Zordan or Zordon? Zordon. Oh, he's yeah, a Zordon's a racist. Yes. Yes. <laughs> The black guy, the black Power Ranger, <laughs> the Asian, the yellow, <laughs> the, 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 Native guy, the, yeah, the Native American. Yeah, the Native American was the red. Like, oh, hold on like, a second. Hey, wait a minute here. <laughs> so what? We're going to be two white rangers? No, you're a girl. You get to wear pink. <laughs> 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 Who made that? That's pretty funny. Was that college humor that made that? I think it was on college, college humor. Yeah, I think it was. I can't remember. <laughs> it was, it was, it was like, her it was like, what's it, the Jewish guy? Yeah. Well, I'm going to be what color? Because green. I'm green? Because, yeah. <laughs> like, and then you mentioned something about being, oh, a gay Jew? Uh, uh, we don't need you anymore. <laughs> what? 
It was horrible. And he's like, all right, so yeah, the white power, the white male power. He's like, I'm going to make you the leader. Well, wait a minute. I'm not really qualified for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She, she's much more qualified. She's the president of the, of the student council, maybe. <laughs> no, no, it's got to be you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can't have girls lead. <laughs> so are you actually going to go see Power Rangers the movie? I want to see it. Really? But I still haven't seen Logan yet. You haven't seen Logan? Uh, oh, Jason, I haven't seen Logan. Oh, my God. I've been trying to see Logan. I was going to do it this weekend with the old lady out on the road, but I didn't get around to it. I was going to do it this weekend, but then I sat on my couch and watched Iron Fist about, all weekend. Were you in your basement drunk playing rock band again? Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> After I had to wait three minutes for an upgrade or uh, update. update from Sony, which mean uh, by the way, well, how update, do you avoid all this shit? Every time I want to go play Sony yeah, game, un- I have to it. wait thirty minutes yeah. to, for the update. Uh, unplug it from, uh, turn off the uh, internet connection. Internet connection. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to. If I was getting turn. irritated. Yeah, and then, then I had problems. The connection, turn it Then off. I had problems because I went and bought songs. <gasps> and then they wouldn't show up in my music category. You usually have to uh, go all the way back to the beginning of the title screen for the uh, game. Yeah, and I, then it will come back. Kind of like, yeah, I of course. If you can imagine, you're you're drunk and you're trying to like Google this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like, how come this isn't working? Okay, maybe turn it off, turn it yeah. back on. <laughs> That usually Step works. On. <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> That's right. Have you rebooted? <laughs> what else we got here? Oh, does it? Oh, did a listener TV series review of Legion. You guys I have TV shows this. or movies you want to review or books? Tale of Two Cities. Send them <laughs> in to us. Des Hazing says I've stopped having thoughts on the show until it's over. Still watching, but it has reset too many times. I need to know the ending first. I have no idea what's going on in Legion. I do. I have no problem following this. Really? Why, why is it confusing? Yeah, that's I need fun. to. I don't understand. I mean, I understand the first episode's confusing, yeah. but then they started filling it in, and I'm following yeah. along. I, I think you know, the what? guy froze in. All right. Yeah, that is the lady's husband. That's Oliver. That, yeah, yeah, that's Doctor Bird's. Husband. Okay, that's husband right. who apparently was similar to like David. Yes, who can astral plane travel and stuff. And that's where he's been lost. He's lost in the astral plane. His drug addicted, the uh, friend that David's, or David's friend that was from Parks and Rec. Lenny yeah. Benny. Yes. Aubrey, yes. Aubrey Aubrey she is really a drug addict and not the psychiatrist, correct? He was just using that as a figment, right? Okay. Well, she, she is the embodiment of the she is the psychic infest, parasite. Infe, yeah, the parasite. The gotcha. psychic okay. infestation parasite that Jeff thinks is the Shadow King. Which is the Shadow and King. And I do think you're right. I do think you're right. I think it is Shadow King. Yeah. All right. So where they're at right now, mm-hmm. okay, at the very end of the, the Naked Butt episode. Naked Butt. Great scene. Was, well, well, Jeff, you said it was. It's not butt. gratuitous. Oh, no. It wasn't gratuitous. Not at all. It's very important to the story development mm-hmm. that we see her butt. I think it is because now she's shown her vulnerability. Yes. Uh, can we say that? That's what it symbolizes. And as she goes into the bathroom to uh, confront the Shadow King, mm-hmm. you know, she's naked yes. and vulnerable. But she's only protecting herself with the blankie in the front. Can I say? In the, the red room. The into white the room. red room. That's that right. Oh, you like the white yes, room. Yes, that's right. The uh, white can room. we but, say that is the oddest uh, losing virginity story ever? That's pretty f- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Does that really it's, count since it really didn't know. physically happen? But it I is, was disturbed by it. It, it was kind of disturbing. It was about story. as disturbing as him playing the Rainbow Connection. That was great. It that was, was great, but it was creepy. You know what? You're talking about music. You know, Westworld and these other shows that I've been watching, mm-hmm. Radiohead has infiltrated all of these shows with their songs. Oh, yes. Because a lot of times, like when I was listening to Westworld, if I couldn't identify the song, I'd Shazam it, or mm-hmm. or not. Is it Shazam? Shazam! Yeah, Shazam. yeah I Shazam it. You know how many Radiohead songs are in all these TV shows? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. because they're whores. Yeah, well, I don't blame them. They're actually, well, that's actually, that's kind of scene, surprised actually. to me because he's usually against all that. Could you be more specific on the Shazam? You weren't yeah. going driving around in a creepy van. No. You were just looking up the music. Yes. Okay, just making Look sure. That. I wasn't making shazamming sure. that. Shazam! <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, all right, so going back to that, mm-hmm. yeah, um, that whole white room. Mm-hmm. Now, 
if you remember, oh, by the way, the scene where they go and, and, and run into the house where all the sound is cut out. Yes. Oh, that was that awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> yes. And then the, the beat and the music and everything that happens they, with it. When the guy it comes was through hilarious. the door. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, remember when the guy comes through the door and they're like mouthing, you can hear, he's like, motherfucker, real loud. Yes. <laughs> and then Dr. Burr starts yelling at him, like, bring out so and so. And he's like, okay, boom. And his, his little kick ass self comes out. Yes. You know, uh, the female. But okay. So Carrie, what, that was the yeah, Carrie, thing. the yeah, male Carrie, Bill Irwin. Bill Irwin is K- Carrie, and his female counterpart is Amber, the younger kick-ass lady. Yeah. So, if you remember, you know the eye, mm-hmm. can, creepiest guy the ever, creepiest guy ever, can apparently uh, take on people's identities. Yes. he can shape shift. I mm-hmm. guess basically, he doppelganger yes. kind of guy. So he doppelgangs the telekinesis guy, mm-hmm. and he's got the Tommy gun, and comes in and starts shooting. And at the last minute, you know, that's where Sydney wraps around and says, takes to the white room. Yes. Well, he does. He basically takes him to the safest place that he knows. And to him, that is, you know, the safety and the, the time, you know, the, the regulated time management of... The insane asylum, the psychiatric mm-hmm. ward. So, Aubrey Plaza. Yes. You know Lenny. Oh, she's great. In that role. she plays she's along. She's playing along with him in this. And in the very beginning, when she first talks about it, she answers him like, "Yeah, this is what we're doing." Da da da. And he makes a reference. He's like, "Yeah, this is why why I'm here." Da da. She's playing along with it and knows it. So he's created. In the astral plane, the safe space for all of them. Yes. Apparently, he took everybody with him, including the eye, yeah, the bad guy, which is not a good idea. Which is not a good <laughs> yeah. idea. But he took everybody there, and that's why Sydney starts breaking through. Like, hey, something's not right. Something's not right, because he screws up and forgets why she was originally there. He missed, you know, with the misdiagnosis. He's saying she's like, no, that's not why I'm here. I'm not here for schizophrenia. You're the schizophrenic. I'm here for the, the touch the, touching. So, thing, yeah. so, but. Lenny, yes. Aubrey Plaza, the Shadow King, is playing along with it. Then she's taking on the role of, psych- of the psychiatrist. You she's know. playing the long game. She's playing, yeah, it, it, exactly. So, so what's pretty neat, they're in the astral plane. That's how Oliver gets back involved in the whole thing because mm-hmm. Oliver's in the astral plane as well, and he's trying to help everybody out, which is pretty cool. So that's why he's getting concerned, David is, because Sydney's starting to realize She's. It, this is not the reality, but he knows this is the reality that he went to. This is the safe place. Do you think they could keep up this whole thing in the second season? I don't know. It did get renewed for a okay. second season. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think they probably can. Do you uh, think it, they would? Hurt, it would hurt the series if they went to thirteen episodes. Yeah, I don't know. I, I give me more. As far as I'm concerned, I like it. I like the storyline. Well I like the whole thing. It, it, as long as they're telling a story and not adding filler, then mm-hmm. I'm fine. Oh, yeah. Walking Dead. I, I like the director. I like the directing. I like the uh, the scene. You know the uh, the the scenic um, the the picked up pictography. I like mm-hmm. the movie. The, like like this past episode had an interesting '60s stylish flashback where you know Aubrey Plaza is dancing around and enjoying herself in. Mm-hmm. You know, David's little world. Oh yeah, I mean, that that was, nice. I mean that was really cool. I mean that's pretty stylish. You yes. know that. You know, so the uh, I I like it in that. What really helped was to watch this past episode and the one before it back to back again, and it uh, clarified a lot of things for me because I was like, hey, question, where are they? How they get here? I didn't understand until you watch it again back to back and like, oh, I got it now. Do you think it's better than Gotham? Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, at this point in time, I always say yeah, but you know what's yeah, neat? Oh, yeah, there might there. Yeah, there, there's a threat for Gotham to win a flop the, this the year best, for best comic book movie or TV show. Could be, but you know, the best scene was the opening scene in the asylum where they they do close ups of everybody's face. Yeah, and that was probably one of the funniest, funniest you know opening scenes for a show. But you know what I like about it when when uh, Lenny is. Uh, you know, Aubrey Plaza is playing the psychiatrist and then talking to people and how they segue to each other is pretty cool. 
I want. I'm still trying to figure out who the blurry person is in the portrait behind the I don't patient know. seat. Did you notice that? Yes, I didn't notice. Yeah, so it's and a I big blurry person. And, and I'm I thought I missed something. What it is. Like, did I miss something with yeah. that? Because I have no idea. I, I I like the show. There are times where I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. But you're enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Exactly. Yeah. I do. I watch it every week. I'm caught up. And t- that's a lot mm. for me to be caught up on something. Yeah, it it is. is. That in Riverdale. Uh, what else? We got some more reviews on Legion? Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, Neil? Neil says he hasn't seen it, but it's awesome. Way to be, Dark Angel. Pretty freak. That's right. And if you've listened to our Neil episodes, yeah. you get the inside Obi joke. He had the same uh, He had the same response to Kong, Skull Island. Just yeah. to let you know. <laughs> Yeah, so if you don't know what we're joking about, go go look up the episodes with Neil yes. and Dark Angels and Pretty Fe- Pretty Freaks, or you know, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, Randall Holt says still enjoying it, unlike Riverdale. Bite your tongue. Yeah, Riverdale. Oh, that's coming up. We'll we'll get Riverdale comments right now. And yeah, then I can. You know. Yeah, but uh, but the long story short, I really like the artistry in Legion. I think is really cool. Oh yeah, cinematography and the, or what? That's what is, the word I was looking for. The cinematography. It, it's it's beautiful. The the way they frame every shot is done with direct purpose. Yes. You're talking and, about Riverdale, right? No. Oh no. And, and, and I love the fact, like the costumes or whatnot. The outfits. I, I, the outfit. It, it's they're it's, pretty it's cool. It's done to keep it so you don't know when. Because you're all like, well, this took place in the '70s. I'm like, I don't think. This I don't know the if 70s. it is the '70s anymore. Yeah, I think it's. Mm-hmm. Any point of period of time, it doesn't when doesn't matter. You know, I feel like it's yeah, you know, for Christmas, I may just ask for some of that clothing. I think you should. Yeah. Right. <laughs> for Halloween, maybe I'll uh, for Halloween, we can yeah, run we, around we, as Legion. We, <laughs> <laughs> I am all inmates. I'm Aubrey Plaza. No, 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 no. you're not Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> <laughs> you're the guy with the drool out of his mouth. Oh, ah. <laughs> You're the tele. Is it going to hit the ground? I forget. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. And it, that, that was the telekinesis guy. Is it? Oh, yeah. Is it? Yeah, that's the telekinesis oh. guy. And I realized that. Yeah. But, but you notice watching it oh, again. Oh, God. I'd have to be like the, yeah. the fat shadow king. I oh, yeah. that is creepy. <laughs> yeah, actually, that'd be awesome. <laughs> We need to skinny your legs down a little bit, though. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that <laughs> lose weight up top, just your legs. That's just right. Legs. Keep the big pear ass, <laughs> yeah. but get little toothpick big legs. <laughs> and we can take a nice, you know, suit coat and cut it up for you. Actually, <laughs> several suit coat layers and cut them up for you. <laughs> oh, you have to make several suit coats for me to fit in. Well, I actually, if we do several for. suit coat layers and cut it up like that with a tie, <laughs> it will make your legs look skinnier. You're right. There you go. And then I'll wear skinny jeans underneath. You may have to shave your skinny. beard, though. Yeah. Unless we paint it like flesh color, we just make it like a scary flesh yeah. face. I'm not no, painting I'm not... anything on his face. <laughs> I'm not I'm, touching. Yeah. I'm not afraid of shaving my beard for a Halloween costume. That's <clears throat> what I'll be willing to shave. Or 20 for. Yeah. pounds of pass. No, that's already expired. Oh, how much would it be now? Uh, there is. Oh, yeah. damn. <laughs> oh. What well, happens if somebody <laughs> bought five t shirts from us for charity? Mm-hmm. No, I, 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 I'm going to give Dev credit. He made me see the light. No okay. man should be forced to have to get rid of his beard okay. if he doesn't Just want to. Me. Yeah, that's true. Me. Oh, yeah. Oh, one last thing about yes. the Legion thing. Inside the Insane Asylum, there's mm-hmm. a lot of glitches. Mm-hmm. And it has to do with the whole memory thing as yeah. well. that they Because they're not reliable. On. Not reliable. Like, like when Carrie's playing ping pong with his amber self. The ball is missing yeah. the first time you look around at it, and then the second time the ball is there. <laughs> when I first saw that, I'm like, did they forget to uh, yeah. uh, CGI the ping pong ball into there? <laughs> nope. Yeah, but but there are several glitches throughout that episode, by the yeah. way. If you, you watch it the second time, you're like, oh, okay. There you go. Fix the glitch. Yeah. So anyways. Can we go into a new a good show, too? No. <laughs> I'll read it. Uh, you read it. I refuse Listener to read reviews Riverdale. reviews of Riverdale, which is on hiatus until next week. From Nikki. <laughs> until next week. Well, it was out for three weeks. <laughs> okay. Nikki, Riverdale's amazing. Riverdale. It's got mystery, and it's amazingly trashy. It's trashy. I don't know if it's amazingly trashy. I don't... It is amazing. I love it. I kind of oh. miss it. I do. I don't. I... <laughs> I was drawn into it, mm-hmm. and I, I didn't like it, but it intrigued me. 
I think after these last two episodes, no, I'm going. not intrigued anymore. Yes, you are. Just keep going. If if I watch from here on out, it's hate watching. No, come on. And I don't like hate watching. I know, but you need to watch because you need to just sit with the first season uh, with us. Come on. Get renewed. We'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, let's go to Randall Holt. Let's speed this up here. Uh, Blake, you got one? <laughs> Randall Holt. Oh, listening to episode 167. Yeah, Senator Fred Durst, <laughs> my favorite senator. He, he just kept rolling. He's yeah. rolling, rolling, rolling. That was my comment. Uh, we had uh, Fred Durst. He did it all for the nookie. Yeah, he's, I was going to say, there's a lot of nookie in Congress. <laughs> oh, I'm Mitch McConnell. How you doing? Okay. Uh, we like said to... nookie. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mitch McConnell is odd. Uh, can we, you want to do a Nick Albright? How would you like oh, that? We do have a Nick Albright this week. Yes. It wasn't on the original outline. I know. He sent it in right before we went to air. All right. Well, I you don't know. even know what's coming up then. Well, you know what that means. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing tonight? Nick playing a little tantric feedback for us. Oh, yeah. He was a little late, but that just makes it last that much better. And it came a little late to the party this week. He says at Bad Ideas Podcast. Oh, tweet it, baby. Is Jeff mm. a believer? Oh. In? Yeah, in and out. Taco what Tuesday. Type, what type of taco? Chicken or beef? Or is he... Beth. An atheist. Oh. At Jeff's number 2.54 fan. That's not all. That's 2.54. I'm certainly a believer in Taco Tuesday, just as long as it's not some ruse to glue the entire city down. Okay. All right. Uh, this week's uh, Nick Albright music was two hours of sex music for intimate erotic <laughs> moments, moaning, <laughs> orgasm, sex, porn music. God. On YouTube. It's a long <laughs> orgasm. Exactly. Two hours. Wow. Uh, can I have yeah, another? But, you know, we can only get through one minute, two seconds. <laughs> New record. <laughs> Apologize. I was in the swimming pool. Uh, it took me a little longer. Uh, speaking of Legos being glued down, I played with Legos this weekend with my uh, son. Yeah. And uh, You wanted to glue him down. Let's just say this. Uh, so he's got a lot of Legos. He you built stepped them. on them. No, no, no. He, I oh. built him a little tray and all that. And he plays with them and that. And then a lot of them through the time have, you know, broken. So he starts building his own new ones. Okay. So I was the bad guys. I started building a base and he started building his base and that. And then his redone bat wing came down and shot a missile and blew up my wall. And I said, but I worked really long on that wall. He's like, yeah, but this is part of the game, dad. I'm, I'm attacking your base. You can attack mine. Why would I want to destroy your base, buddy? You built that. It took me a while. <laughs> well, yeah, but this is the game. Come on. I was like. Oh, he's like, well, I'll put it back for you, Dad. Here, I'll put it back. And then he comes back with another missile from a car and blows it down. I was like, well, no, I just don't know what to do here. And in about two minutes of this, I'm like, can we just glue? Can we just glue this? I don't understand. I hate Legos. I don't understand Legos. Wow. You break them, they fall apart. I don't want to keep building. That's the point. No. The point is to keep building. I don't want to keep building. They're building toys. I don't want to keep building. <sighs> You know, back in the early days of Lego, mm -hmm. you would build something and use your imagination for it to be something. Oh, he's got the... Nowadays, you just go buy this shit. You don't even use imagination. You just follow the Oh, no, he's got the classic... It's called classic. He's got a lot of the classic yeah. sets he builds on his own. Oh, good. Yeah. Is he building a wall? <laughs> we did build a wall. <laughs> the deport then he broke it. All <laughs> but then, he, then, he, then his Batman shot it down. That's yeah, right. There you go. Hawkeye came by with an arrow. I'm like, okay, now I'm done. I'm done with this. Stupid Legos. Ball breaking arrow. Fucking Legos. <laughs> Did you say ball breaking arrow? <laughs> oh, sure, why arrow. not? Uh, let's get to Professor number one and wrap this sucker up. All right, uh, from Professor number one and Doctor number one mm -hmm. says, What's the chance Riverdale dethroned Gotham as a floppy winner? Pretty Zero. damn good. Zero percent Zero. chance. Legion can do it. I can't believe you tricked me into reading a question with Riverdale in it. <laughs> I was bastard. I was diverting your attention. Uh, let's do. A, we, let's get a new, an old segment requested from our fans. Yay! I think it's called "Riddle Me This." Like "Riddle Me This." What is "Riddle Me This" for the new listeners? A "Riddle Me This" is where you know we kind of smash uh, things together. We'll take one universe, 
and mm-hmm. cast it with another universe. You have to give us both, though. Yeah, you tell us, you know, who we should cast and what we should cast them with, and then we'll sit around and discuss it and try to come up with yeah. the best possible scenario it's of m- that. It's more of up. a collusive draft. Yeah, game. it's yes. yes, no, it's no competition. Even though Besotted Geek still still thinks that Jeff's going to win, so <laughs> I probably will. <laughs> Riddle Me This from Doug has cast the Game of Thrones characters with WWE wrestlers. Any now, any wrestlers. Now, hold on a second. Yes. Okay. Is Doug actually a Game of Thrones watcher? No, he has no idea what it is. That's why this list sucks. No. Well, um, did he send the list or did uh, you make up the Did you make this did. list? The intern, the intern gave us this list. Oh, well, we know the intern doesn't watch Game of Thrones. That's why this list sucks. I Googled <laughs> Game of Thrones cast. Yes. And the intern said, and what do you think you... about this, Mr. Brigger? I was like, yeah, that looks good. Yes. Now, when you read all these and you're trying to come up with WWE wrestlers uh-huh. for these, this is where the problem comes in. Because you don't they? know who these yeah. characters well, read are. Who the characters you're just are. picking names out. Yeah, that makes it more fun. Daenerys yeah. Targaryen, Jon Snow, Arya Stark, Sansa Stark, Cersei Lannister, Tyrion Lannister. You c- could have picked five other different Game of Thrones characters that we could have applied the <laughs> WWE wrestlers to. Yeah. Like, you know, the Mountain. That'd be easy. That'd be Andre the Giant. Yeah, yeah. Because... You know? But no, we're stuck with... This list. This li- well, we can make our own. I'm writing down the Mountain Andre the Giant right now. There you okay. go. Good job, Jeff. There you go. Uh, now, now, all right. Tarkin. Andre the Giant is the Mountain. Mm-hmm. Who is the Hound? Other than the Junkyard Dog. Junkyard Dog. <laughs> junkyard you know what? Dog works. Write it down. <laughs> junkyard, junkyard Dog. Uh, All right, but anyways, <laughs> who is uh, Daenerys Targaryen? Targaryen. Yes, she's the mother of dragons. Okay, yes. that would be Stephanie McMahon. But but Daenerys is a good, beautiful woman. Stephanie McMahon's hot. I think so. Oh, okay. I don't even know who she is. She's, She's the, the this, this is this part of the problem. Yeah, this is the my, problem. my wrestling characters are stuck okay, in fine. 1980s. <laughs> fine. Uh, well, well, that's the thing. I was trying to apply <laughs> Roddy Roddy Piper to one of these, and I couldn't find it. Yeah, there's like, what, two women wrestlers from, the, from what you remember? I uh, only had Miss Elizabeth for Sansa Stark. Oh, I like that. Write that one down. There you go. It's better than Sophia Turner as uh, Jean Grey. Anyway, uh, okay, Amelia Clark, let's do Wendy Richter. How about that? She was a women's wrestler. She was. That's one of the two I knew. Okay, let's do Wendy Richter. All right, just so everybody knows, Wendy Jason Richter. is cheating. That's how he knew Amelia Clark was Daenerys Targaryen, because he just Googled it on his yeah, iPad. Yeah, here's the, here's the cast that our intern wrote down. Uh, I think Peter Dinklage, his character, Tyrion. Tyrion, Tyrion Lannister. It, yeah, was no, that's like Hornswoggle. Tyrion, Tyrion Hornswoggle. Lannister. Yeah. Is it just because he's okay. small? Exactly. Exactly. He's a dwarf. The character is a dwarf. That he's was, a little person. I was going to do Piper, because he's kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Hornswoggle. There, there's no ifs, ands, or buts okay, about put him it. Down. Uh, John Snow. What is John Snow? I can only think of uh, Steamboat, Ricky the dragon. dragon. What is St- what is because he? John, John Snow, Snow is, is the guy that everybody's rooting for to win, but he's he always Harrington, loses. The... Okay, he, so he's always re- they're always rooting for him to win, but he he knows nothing. Dolph but he, Ziggler. But he knows nothing, and he ends up losing half the time. Dolph Ziggler for no reason. There, Ricky the Steamboat. Lose? Eh, Ricky Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Ricky That's why I was thinking. It's not bad. I do uh, like that one. <clears throat> uh, I'm trying to think who else back thinking, in the day. I was thinking because he knows nothing, you pick George the Animal Steel. Yeah, John Snow? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that would work. Just, just because he he's actually a really intelligent person, but he comes all across as stupid. And everybody roots for him to win. That is <laughs> but, true. But. Yeah. I, I like Ricky Steamboat. He doesn't win much. I like that one. See, I, I wish it would have picked... I'd rather go Superfly Snooker. <laughs> All right, there you go, Snooker. Yee- there you go. Because Snooker's got the hair for it. He's got okay, the hair for it. He's got the black curly <laughs> He's hair He's got the black him. curly hair. Okay. That's just Snooker. <laughs> See, now I wish he would have picked Jamie Lannister well, because I could have applied, you know, uh, ra- Rowdy Rowdy Piper. As, ja- as Jamie Lannister. I can see that. Okay, so that's down. Jamie okay. Are we almost done with this? Roddy Piper. No, we're going to dwell on Game of Thrones no. because... <laughs> well, well, we still yeah. have to get Arya Stark and Cersei Lannister because Who's those are the type Who's going to be Arya one. Stark? I don't know. Uh, Jason. Yes. Arya Stark. Uh-huh. She, she's the young one, mm-hmm. but she's the one that likes to fight. Trained to be an assassin. Trained to be an assassin. She's the deadly. Becky Lynch. Avenge. Avenge Just trust me. Becky Lynch. She's All a right. Scottish... Uh, wrestle female wrestler. She kicks ass, and she is she. Uh, her nickname is the Last Kicker. Okay, 
There you go. All so, right. We're going Cersei with Lannister. Chris Richardson, help me out on this one. Cersei Lannister, wouldn't that be what's her name? The big girl that died recently? China. China. She actually kind of looks like China. Yeah, we're going. No, with no, no, no. China would have to be Brienne of Tarth. That was my guy. Yeah, oh, mind. yeah. That's perfect. Charlotte. Yeah. Lena. He- um, Headley, Hedy, Headley. Oh yeah, Headley. Charlotte, Headley. 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 Headley's daughter. Charlotte, okay. yep. Charlotte, put uh, Charlotte down. Charlotte. Oh, I and that w- that means uh, we can put Ric Flair as uh, uh, Tywin Lannister. Oh, that was my next guess. Yeah, it was a good call. <laughs> it's a good call. Because it's yes, Cersei's father. Yes. Okay, yeah, we sure. can do that. Uh, there we you got go. Your, how about um, what about Eddard Stark? Who was, was that? Being, Eddard Stark. I would have yeah, to someone who's being, dead. Being, that's he was the he was the king, right? <laughs> he, he, yeah, he, he, no, he, he wasn't the king. He was the ward of the north. Okay, he, he was, was, was the hand of the king. He was the so he was the honorable guy. He was who, the only honorable guy. Okay, who lost his head? Honorable guy that loses his yeah, head. That's a head tough one. Oh, that's a tough one. Honorable guy. Who's the honorable guy that lost in the end? Who would that be? Could be in WWE. Dolph Ziggler wasn't no. the honorable um, guy. That's Unfortunately, a tough one. No. Hillbilly Jim? The honorable guy is God, probably somebody like John Cena. <clears throat> yeah, John Cena is a good one. Do that one. No, he's the Marky Mark of the WWE. Well, he is not that anymore. Too. Oh, he still is. Yeah. But John Cena is a good one. John Cena or Kurt Angle. Uh, Kurt Angle had to turn as a heel. Yeah. Cena's never been a heel. Uh, okay, do Cena. Do Cena. All right, there we go. Uh, who plays uh, Samuel Tarley? Ooh. I'm going to say Kevin Owens because it looks like him. It does. <laughs> so I'm going Kevin Owens for Samuel Tari. <laughs> I, I can't disagree with there that. You go. I can't. Uh, Kyle Drago. Wait, wait, hold on a sec. I'm getting a. <laughs> oh, Kyle Drago. One of those uh... Roman Reigns. I think one of, the, one of those foreign guys that can't speak English. Rusev. Who, uh, Rusev is uh, good. The, the what's, Islander what's guys. The, uh, or something. What's the undead guy? The crypt keeper. Undertaker. Guy. Undertaker. Yeah. yeah. Undertaker. Who's he going to be? Oh, that guy. Okay. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? Okay, I'm going to pick one he's more gonna guy. Be Kyle, he's going to be Drogo. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, Carl. <laughs> Samwell. Okay. Uh, last one I'm going to pick. Uh, who is Joffrey Barathon? Oh, Joffrey man. Baratheon. He is like one of the most evil characters in the Vince history McMahon? of... Ooh, Triple H? Joffrey. But Maybe. he's got to he's got to be young though. Kevin yeah, Nash. He was young. He pulls the strings though, doesn't he? No, no. Well, Joffrey got the strings pulled. Okay. Jo- Joffrey was the guy who was in charge, but he was brash and young and a dick. He's the guy and, he's, and he's very the, easily manipulated. He, yeah. Roman he's, Reigns. He's the kid that would pull the wings off of flies. You know that kind of. Roman Reigns. Okay. Fuck him. Uh, okay, let me do one more. Um, I'm going to do Gendry. <laughs> who the fuck is Gendry? <laughs> He looks like a. He's Evercomian a character that fish. disappeared in season two. Uh, yeah, he's he, you know, he supposedly one of the illegitimate children illegitimate for child of the the dead king. Yeah, Shane McMahon. He went away for a while. There you go. <laughs> okay, sure. So there's your riddle me this. Hey, let me write these down. <laughs> Modified Game of Thrones. Babe, characters. I would like to uh, do another riddle me this. I think I did pretty damn well for that. Who one. did you say for mm-hmm. uh, for Joffrey again? Um, um, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. Yeah, just because he's an asshole. Fuck him. All right, let me read all that we got okay. written down here. Uh, for Daenerys Targaryen, we got Wendy Richter. Okay. For Jon Snow, we got Jimmy Superfly Snuka. Okay. For Arya Stark, we got Becky Lynch. Mm. Sansa Stark, we got Miss Elizabeth. Okay. Cersei Lannister, we have Charlotte Flair. Mm-hmm. Tyrion Lannister, we have Hornswoggle. Ooh. Jamie Landerster is Roddy Piper. Uh, Ned Stark is John Cena. Okay. Brienne of Tarth is China. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Mountain is Andre the Giant, and the Hound is the Junkyard Dog. Okay. Tywin Lannister is Ric Flair. Samuel Tarley is Kevin Owens. Joffrey Baratheon is Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. And Gendry is... Shane McMahon. Gendry. Shane McMahon. Shane O'Mac. Shane O'Mac. Oh, wow. I, I hope Doug is happy and proud of that one. <laughs> uh, or Game of Thrones listeners. <laughs> Let's uh, do some uh, network promos. Hey, Hobie listeners. Wait on September 22nd through 24th. If anything, if you're in Cincinnati, you should probably come to the Cincinnati Comic Expo at the Duke Energy Center. 
a fun-filled weekend uh, with lots and lots of fellow geeks and nerds. Uh, here's some of the stars coming. Julian Glover from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade from Game of Thrones. He plays the Heatmeister, I think. Uh, we also have Greg Capullo, the artist from Batman. Uh, we got John Ratzenberger, Cliff Clavin himself, and in every other Pixar films. I uh, wish I should probably lead with that instead of the Cliff Clavin because no one has seen that in years. We also have Adam Hughes, who was on Wonder Woman. And we got Carrie Yules from The Princess Bride, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, and many other films. So, if you're in the Cincinnati area, September 22nd through the 24th, 2017, go to the CincinnatiComicExpo.com, get your tickets, and uh, we will see you at the expo. The Epic Film Guys podcast is a film comedy podcast with two best friends celebrating everything we love about going to the movies. We've got great beer, amazing guests, and quirky characters unlike anything you've ever heard before. Well, I just assumed you were drinking that chocolate stout that you were going to make with the cheapest crap chocolate ice cream in a Miller Lite. I remember being a young man and my mother telling me I didn't have a name because I was illegitimate. I don't know what that word means. <laughs> Never be sorry on the Epic Film Guys podcast. Never be sorry. C- cut in, talk over. I'm sorry every time I finish out. doing an episode. I didn't hear that, Nick. Don't bring it up yet. I'm not supposed to come out till like the end of the episode. Subscribe to the Epic Film Guys on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, or your favorite podcast app. And we'll see you at the movies. It's time for... Box Office Bombs. Bombs. These bombs suck. Oh, I hate Box Office Bombs. Uh, Were there any bombs this week? No. There were no bombs. (laughs) (laughs) This was a great week for movies, apparently. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Wow. A great week for people going to the movies. There you go. Let's do that. For people that... Don't great, stay at home and play rock band in the basement by themselves. <laughs> it was a great week for the uh, movie studios to make money. We'll go that There way. you go. I, I tried to get out this weekend. They didn't get my money, though. You went to see I Get Out? I want to give them my money. I want to see Get Out. Yeah, I want to see that, too. But number one this week, Beauty and the Beast. <sighs> Made $170 million in its opening weekend on a $160 million budget. How? I know uh, why. Emma uh, Watson's in it. Yeah, but, but D- Disney is putting it. Actually, looks like a good movie. See, and it looks Disney, creepy. And Disney well, pimping it I- out. Ignore the fact that the candlestick looks terrible yeah. or whatnot. <clears throat> but but Emma Watson doesn't look terrible. I know, but it's just I, I don't I I don't know. And the nostalgia of the nineteen nineties. Yeah, I'll just watch a cartoon. Yeah, well, a lot. Of, it passed uh, two hundred million internationally already, so we're almost at four hundred million total. <laughs> oh, I was watching the news. I suppose it was Monday or something, and they were talking about, oh yeah, the and uh, over one hundred and seventy million tickets were sold. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's it's gonna like, be a record. I think the newscaster got that a little wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little off. Are you going to go see it? I don't know. Because if I see it, it probably would be better to see on the big screen. But, I mean, I still have to see Logan. I still have to see Power Rangers. Are you allowed being in a theater with small kids with Beauty and the Beast? Uh, uh, the restraining order doesn't say anything about movie theaters. Okay, just Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> that, that was awkward when I went to see the Lego movie on, like, an afternoon by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in there with all these parents and their young kids. And... Don't go near him. <laughs> Don't go near the guy with the trench coat. <laughs> I saw him on the Tinder app. <laughs> Stay away from the big bearded man. <laughs> <laughs> the the Catholic priest Tinder app? Yeah, it's Is called that... Prinder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number two this week, Kong Colon Skull Island made twenty nine million, a total of one hundred and ten million on an one hundred and eighty five million dollar budget. Jason still loves it and thinks it's Love great. Love it. I might go see it again because you want it to get its budget back. Yes. Oh, I'll already passed that internationally, so we're okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Logan made seventeen and a half million, a total of one hundred and eighty four million on a budget of ninety seven million. Number one uh, Wolverine film of all time now. I believe it. Uh, probably the best Wolverine film. Yes. I- Oh, Wolverine Origins is good. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That back. Sorry. Take that back. Sorry. I will take it back. Uh, number four, Get Out. 
made thirteen million, a total of one hundred thirty three million on a four point five million dollar budget. Good for them. Love to see the little film that could. Yeah, I love that. It's made one hundred thirty three million on four point five. Yeah. And the shack made another six million, total of forty three million on twenty million dollar budget. I just don't know if I could take myself to see that one after Jeannie explained to us what it was. Oh, that might be a tough one to watch. Yeah, I don't know if I want to watch any movie with <laughs> fucking pedophile about it. Uh, I'm a little scared by that. Uh. All right, here's the important stuff. Upcoming March 24th, 2017, we've got chips. Uh, they said below $10 million. Is what it's expected to be. I, I watched that, and I, it's one of those trailers that I think all the good jokes are in the trailer. I hope not, because there weren't any good jokes in the trailer. <laughs> the jokes in the trailer. Oh, <laughs> the the, the joke is bad. <laughs> the whole jokes are, we can't let our penises be near each other. Ew, get your bulge away from me. Second joke, can't get your penises near each other. Yeah. Third joke, I think you touched my penis. <laughs> I did laugh at one part. And then that guy's married to Kristen Bell. You know how angry that makes me? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Because if I had a five, <laughs> Kristen Bell would be on it. I did, The only joke that I like is when they're on the motorcycle and he's like, he's heading north. And then the guy falls off the motorcycle. Yeah. Call he's he's <laughs> at, heading south. No. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Okay. I mean, the yeah. one that said something about, well, we're going to call the police. He's like, well, aren't you the police? <laughs> You're gonna... It still looks awful. Oh, it looks terrible. I like Dax Shepard, actually. What else is coming out? Uh, Life. That's expected to be around $10 million, which surprises me. He's got Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds. I don't know what it is. Is that based on the board, Parker's Brother board game? I hope to God not. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Reynolds goes to college, Jake Gyllenhaal doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the other way around. Yeah, probably the other way around. Not to stereotype yeah, them already. And they but... both decided not to buy the insurance. <laughs> No, one buys insurance, one doesn't. <laughs> yeah. They force them to have kids. So. No, marriage. Marriage. Not kids. No, you no. You have to land on the They force to them to take no. pink pegs yeah. <laughs> in the passenger seat. And he just wants to quit you. Yeah. I can't quit you. Uh, no, they, it's the one that they go to space and they find the, um, the Martian, alien life form from Martian, Mars. Yeah, oh. life form. Sounds Which is kind of like an alien. It looks good, though. Or is it more like the arrival? Is it circles? Damn. <laughs> yeah, uh, I had to bring that time. up. Yeah. You know, uh, I that's forgot actually about that. Oscar winning. Uh, oh, right. the Oscar oh, shit. winning a ride. No, whatever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, they said there was a rumor that it was floating around because it's from the same company that it actually could be a prequel to Venom because it's this little life form that keeps growing and growing and it's a symbiote. It's, and it looks like it it's actually by looks Marvel? like Marvel? No, it's by uh, Disney. No, no, no. Uh, who owns Fox or Twice? Oh, Fox. Yeah. Fox does that. That's right. Fox owns. And Spider-Man. they said it or would Sony. be. Sony, Sony owns Spider Man. Yeah. I thought okay. it was like a blob. Well, it just starts growing. Like a it's blob. like a t- it becomes okay. a tentacle and all. But they said it would be a clever way of doing it. And there has been rumblings that it could be, you know, a prequel to it. They said it. M- 99 percent like not won't be. But but th- it was like that's actually a clever way of doing it. If it turns into a symbiote by the end of the movie, yeah. it's coming into Spider-Man. And basically, they try to prevent it from getting to Earth because that's it's what's wiped out the, on Mars. Uh, that's what wiped out the life yeah. on Mars? Uh-huh. So they said they were trying to stop it from getting to Earth. It looks good, but they said it's only expected to be about $10 million. So, All right. right go ahead. Uh, and, of course, Power Rangers. $30 million is what they're expecting. Only 30 Yeah, they said. I mean, said, I'm not expecting the 170 that Beauty and the Beast did, but... Mid-20s to, uh, mid-20 to uh, mid-30s. <sighs> or, or low 30, sorry. Uh, good news about Beauty and the Beast, it did top uh, Batman v Superman as the best opening in March. Ooh. Batman v Superman, about 160. And uh, Beauty and the Beast also was the biggest opening for a G or PG rated movie. I did hear that. So, I mean, I'm not which getting. One, which I, one is it, G or PG? I think it's PG. Should be. Why should it be? The movie, uh, the cartoon was G. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Aladdin and the Lion King are the next live action movies coming out. Yeah, I think they're going a little overboard on making all these live action. Yes, yes, but it's making money. Yep, yeah, it is. Uh, buy sell this week? Oh. Starting with uh, Emma Watson. Buy. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> Do we Any need to discussion? explain why we're buying Emma Watson? Em- stock? Emma, Watson Emma Watson now falls into the, the, the similar role of uh, Kirsten Dunst in regards to my male dumb. Uh, don't say that to him. He despises Kirsten. You know, Kirsten does God, you know, just deal with you know. You, you first get exposed to her as uh, you know, kissing the child. Va- you know, vampire as a interview child. With the vampire. You know, yeah. Interview with a vampire, and then 
gets older and turns into a, a young, you know, good looking yeah. young lady. You're, you're right. I didn't know how to feel when I saw uh, Emma Watson's cleavage on yeah. Vanity well, Fair. Well, I thought it was Kirsten Dunst. She was in, oh, what was that movie where she played the, the queen? Crazy uh, oh. teenager who fell in love with the other crazy teenager. And, oh, yeah. Romeo and Juliet? No. <laughs> uh, oh, I forgot what it is, but oh, she looked so good in that movie. She was like, Melancholia? No. No, that wasn't um, it. Uh, cra- uh, crazy slash something? I crazy think. Stupid Love? No, it's not Crazy Stupid Love. Uh, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> crazy Stupid Love's got uh, Emma, Emma Stone in it, so was that's there, Were there at that prep school? Uh, that one where she was at the prep school? Mona Lisa Smile? Podcast. No, no, not Mona Lisa Smile. Crazy Beautiful. Crazy Beautiful. That's it. Crazy yeah. Beautiful. Crazy Beautiful. Yes. I saw her in that, and I'm like, oh, this is not the girl that I saw in Interview with a Vampire anymore. <clears throat> That's right. Uh, yeah, it's kind of the same thing with Emma Watson. Emma Watson. What? what? Emma what? But, uh, yep. Yeah, uh, you know what it is. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, also, buy sell. Uh, you mind selling stock in Josh Gad? I tried finding who this is. He's like a voice actor for Frozen and stuff. Or why is he on this list? He plays Lafoe in Beauty and the Beast. You don't know who jo- Josh Gad's? No. A very popular actor right now. He does some voices. Did I look up the wrong Josh? No, Gad? he was the voice. He in is the Josh Frozen. Gad? Yeah. Okay. What? Sure. I mean, I'll buy him because obviously his uh, yeah. stock is very low. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, you don't know who go, up from there, go up from here. I think it's probably higher than you think it is. That's but... right. I was just shooting over here because you were talking about Kirsten Dunst. My bad. Oh. Yeah, that, that joke failed miserably. You can't even Aww. get your shooting sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's my shooting hand. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hand I. This is the hand uh, I iPhone with. <laughs> Oh no! What else was I'm buying Josh Gad? What else was he in? No, uh, there's remember. a lot more people that I could have yeah. the intern could have picked this week, but they didn't care. They didn't care. Yeah, no. All right, and so now it's off to our top five. Top five. Okay, top five this week. What I say was the hardest uh, top five list I've made since we started. Wow. Top five kids' films that terrified you. When you were a kid. Oh, it has to be when you were a kid? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a list at all. This was really hard because you said five kid films that terrified you, and I really had to dig hard. Oh. Into my childhood. You're one. forcing me to go back several years here. Sorry. I mean, there are a lot of films that scared the yeah. shit out of me when I was a little kid. But you said kids' films. Yeah. Well, Jeff, if you're kids' films, you can, yeah. or do you have yeah. kids' films? I have some kids' films in there. I'll put it this way I don't know of any movie I've ever seen that terrified me. Ever. Yeah. Creeped you out. Scared you, maybe. Okay, scared me, maybe? You no, know, I'll just do a fucking top five. Anyway. Yeah. No, no. I'll, <laughs> I'll put. I'll, I'll start. Okay. My number five is none. There are none. When I was a kid, I asked my parents. I asked my sister. I've been racking my brain for three days or two days on this. You yeah. didn't say Jim. Well, because Jim wouldn't know because he's younger than me. <laughs> so I would say Jim. Before you were born, what movies were I? Or really you should have just me? asked Jim what five movies well, were a kid scared the shit out of you, and then adopt yeah. them as your own and see if he oh, listens good. to the podcast and say, "Hey, <laughs> he plagiarized my five. I thought about going out to you know, a guy at work. I, he started giving me his, and I'm like, I might do your list because I can't come up with. Well, one as a kid, I didn't really watch movies. Okay, see, I did. Uh, uh, the VCR was not invented yet. Okay. So you had to go to the theater by the time we got cable. Or you, could, that or you, could, watch, you could watch the movies on network television. Yeah, yeah, if they were put on network television. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, sorry, The Wizard of Oz didn't scare me. Oh. You got scared by The Wizard of Oz? Yeah, but are right. you telling me the that monkeys? Was, that was my number two. The flying monkey scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Number oh, shut up, shut up. <laughs> Jeff, when shut we're up. talking about kids, I'm thinking single digits here. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, that's, you, you first see that when you're six or seven. That's I thought they scary. were ridiculously stupid looking. Wizard of Oz, the tornado scared me. Number two. The tornado? Yeah. The tornado. tornado scared the shit out of me in real life when I was a kid. Two, number two. Okay, well, I didn't mean to ruin your list. Shut the there. fuck up, Sorry. I just couldn't yeah, shut up. fathom people you're being done. afraid you're of done. that movie. You're dead to us. <laughs> All right, so it's so so Jason and Blake list. And yeah. Tom, yeah. My number five is not a kid film, but I had to put it down anyway okay. because I was so traumatized by this. What? Because this was when cable first came out, mm-hmm. and the movie channel was a big deal. And we went over to our friend's family's house, and we watched Jaws. And I refused to get into the ocean that year for family vacation because that movie scared the shit out of me so much that Jaws, I would not go into the ocean. I would I think not it was a different go time, in. But I never was scared by Jaws. It was a good movie, great I've, movie. I've never had a movie. Uh, when reaction. you're seven years old, yeah. I've never had a movie reaction on because I know, I know these are fake. These are fictional movies. No. I never was. It, when I left Jeff the movie, was a, ball, was a ball of fun as a kid, wasn't yeah, he? Exactly. Well, I'm sorry. I, 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 I can't fathom ever being scared by you're a movie. Off, you're off this list. Other than, like, maybe... Pretend uh, we're wa- talking Walking Dead. Shut the fuck up. My number five, Blake. Let me explain my what number What was your five. number five? Uh, Cat Creep Me Out as a Kid, and I only saw it twice, I think. And I haven't seen it since. And I still don't want to. I never liked it because it creeped me out. Willie Wonka on the Chocolate Factory. As a kid, that really freaked me out. I don't think out. that really scared me as much as I thought it was just weird. I'm not saying I was laying under the pillow scared, but yeah. it freaked me out a lot. Now, was like, it the I'm never... Oompa Loompas, or was it I don't the... think we're talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> or or was it the boat trip scene? Actually, Gene Wilder just creeps me out. The Oompa oh. Loompas are not fun. But I just, yeah. oh, it creeps me out, the whole thing. Uh, my number four is uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh, uh, it is, the queen kills me on that I one. have five, yeah, number four. Was Snow White stepmother? You had Snow White on there too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five was Jaws. Four was Snow White. There's something about Snow White. It's just a creepy show. Uh, What's your number four, Blake? It was Snow White. That was Snow White. He just said that. My My number three. (laughs) My number. My number four is the Never Ending Story. Oh, just back in this. It's just a scary premise of a movie that it never ends. I don't blame. And it looks terrible. The the. Flying dragon thing. It looks like Big Clifford, the big yes, white dog. Exactly. It's just creepy. Yeah. Big giant Clifford with wings. <laughs> is it bad when I... I mean, how could it be scary? When you it's said creepy. More creepy right, than creepy. scary. Is All it right. bad that when you said Clifford, I think of the uh, Martin Short? <laughs> jo- uh, jo- yes, that's very yeah. sad. You know? <laughs> the, uh, gross, the guy. You know, we should have on there... Well, we should have it on their uh, shows that scare you now as an adult that didn't as a child. And the first one would be that Shazam TV series with the creepy old guy in the RV with the kids. Jeff, what's your number four or three? Right, go ahead. Yeah, what's uh, your three? My number three is The Peanut Butter Solution. Okay, hey, Jeff. Blake, I don't what's your know what three? the movie is, but when I typed in creepy children's movies, that popped up on a bunch of lists, and it seemed pretty <sighs> creepy. Yeah, if you're not going to play right, don't play at all. <laughs> I'm not playing right. Blake, what's your number three? Well, you know what scared me was the uh, the bad guy in uh, Escape to Witch Mountain. Oh, okay. The original, yeah. not the not the remake. I don't think I ever saw it. The original? Yeah, yeah the original oh, yeah. was followed up by Return to Witch Mountain. I remember them in the video store seeing yeah. the, the covers, but mm-hmm. never seeing the movies. Yeah. The I, Rock did the remake. Yeah. Uh, my number three is E.T., E.T., I was, uh, really? yeah, I was like two or three when, I was three or four, sorry, mm-hmm. when I saw it, it creeped me the fuck out. That was for my brother. He wrote, uh, you better put this on there. And I said, yeah, it, it, it did creep me out a lot. Yeah. I did not like E.T. Interesting. Yeah, I you still hated the movie because it's a fucking horrible film. I saw a funny E.T. meme this past What's week. What's that? <laughs> it, says, it shows a picture of E.T. It says, illegal alien. And at the bottom says, but still learn to speak English, damn it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Down the hall. Down the hall. I, it was just funny. Down the hall. Uh, actually, I was scared by E.T. the movie and the Atari game. Fuck yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the, the Atari <laughs> game sucked. No, I hated Atari that Atari game. Well, that's why I was kidding. <laughs> that was... Uh, that, that was Oh, God. You fall down the cliff. It yeah. takes you ten minutes oh, to get out because your neck extends. Yeah. And then you uh, slip and fall back down and yes. do it again. Uh, my number two was The Wizard of Oz that Jeff ruined. Yeah. yeah. What's your number three, Jeff? Or number two, Blake? I believe uh, that was my number two, okay. Wizard, Wizard of Oz, Oz as well. Jeff, what's your number Did you want to explain any more about The Wizard of no, Oz? No, fuck you. 
<laughs> Tornadoes well, and flying monkeys, yeah. man. Yeah. Okay. The witches laugh. Oh, no, yeah. The, like the peanut butter solution. Peanut butter is the secret ingredient for magic potions made by two friendly ghosts. Reese's. 11 year old Michael loses all his hair when he gets a fright and uses the potion to get his hair back. Doesn't that sound creepy? Shut up. What's your number two? Uh, my number two is Coraline. Oh, yeah, the Tim Burton one? Yeah. That is kind of creepy. Uh, no, button eyes. No, that's creepy. <laughs> that's, your button eyes is about as creepy as dogs wearing human uh, outfits. I hate it. It's fucking creepy. Uh, yeah, no, but yeah. Replacing but, uh, buttons are creepy enough when you put them in eyes. I haven't seen that movie. That one probably would creep me out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get buttons next week. Giant buttons. Just put them over my eyes for the show. That's what I'm going to do. That's, that's fine, because I'll just come in with nutcrackers. Oh, uh, stupid nutcrackers. <laughs> Je- uh, Blake, where's your number two? Wizard of Oz. The what's number Oz? one? <laughs> oh, wait, oh, wait. oh my number one. one. Uh, my number one is the Polar Express. Oh, that's just the creepiest creepy. kids movie ever made. <laughs> you know why? Because the characters look creepy as fuck. Oh, yeah. The, oh, the that's... They, they still needed to work on motion capture, yes. and it was horrifying, especially the end with the Steven Tyler elf. How is that movie so uh, beloved? I don't know. It's I terrible. I don't get it. There, there's nothing good about that They're movie. Like, it's an instant classic, and everybody loves it. No, it is a horrible show. It is horrible. And creepy. It is creepy. I never got around to it. My son loves it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Uh, what's your number one, Blake? <laughs> number one. Now, I remember being, I, uh, I think my uh, aunt and grandma took me to this movie because it was in the theaters. Was it's it like called a the... talkie back then? You no. Know, yeah, it was called a talkie. <laughs> <laughs> they replaced the sound on piano. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it was one of those deals where, you know, Disney was, you know, playing the classic movies in theater. Mm-hmm. And, and so he took me to go see Bambi. And really? I was traumatized by really? Bambi's mom being killed. That ain't by good. hunters being shot. <laughs> I'm pretty, uh, whatever. <laughs> That traumatized well, the shit out of me, man. Really? I was like four or five years old. My my mom always were like, Aren't and then the porch catches on no. fire. Everybody's running to get yeah. out. I mean, I hear everyone. Uh, you know, Bambi was scared. I've never seen Bambi. I can't so, eat really? deer meat to this day. Oh, it's so good. Oh, no venison. Mm, I can't do better it. when it's baby deer. Uh, <laughs> I like my meat to be ugly. So can make up stop it. Uh, <laughs> No, my mom was like, all of that, it was another Pete's Dragon type thing. My mom was yeah. like, oh, you know, Bambi's coming out on VHS. We can get to watch it, blah, blah, blah. I watched it. I was like, eh. She's like, didn't you like it? Eh. Yeah. <laughs> You're too care. old. You were too yeah, old. There's like the whole seven. Movie. I, I, too I old. Saw, yeah. like, saw the scene where, like, Bambi is, like, born and yeah. can't walk. And, His eyes scare me. And then he meets me. the other uh, thumper and yeah. flower. And that's about all I know from the movie. Bambi's eyes are like your button eyes from Coraline. They oh, creep really? me out. Yeah, they kind of creep me out. I'm like, oh, love it. You got too many big eyes. <laughs> uh, this is a movie that still freaks me out to this day. I can't fucking stand it. Pinocchio. It is a creepy ass fucking show. I, when the movie? Yeah, he the turns show. into uh, whatever. He goes into the fucking donkey. Oh my god, when he turns into the turns donkey, turns into an ass. Yeah, it, the whole movie. He's a puppet uh, to begin with. When you have the puppet pedophile builds a little boy because he's lonely. Okay, that's not creepy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go to no, prison. I will <laughs> say it is a little creepy if you go back and think about all the other boys that were turned into donkeys. Yes, and, yeah, it is a little freaky. Uh, that's, you that's start go to printer, buddy. Just go to printer. It's okay. <laughs> you start applying, you know, modern thought to this. Fairy tale, and you're like, this is pretty scary. Yeah, the whale, everything's fucking that movie. Exactly. Creepy. I remember my again. I got it when I was a little bit younger on VHS. Yeah, uh, from the videos where I don't even think I finished it because I was so yeah. creeped out. My son watched but, it, but you know what? It's, I was still it's still out. it's still an innocent concept until we twist it with our own modern ideals and bad things. <laughs> I still think it. it's creepy as fuck. It's kind of like what well, 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 justice warriors do to everything these days. It, you know? it, like, it, it is. Creepy. You know, Wonder Woman didn't shave her armpits. <laughs> it, <laughs> It is creepy that this uh, what you uh, the Stromboli guy is like kidnapping children. Yes, Stromboli and turning them into donkeys and whatnot. Ah, that, that's creepy. Yeah. It is creepy. Eh? Yeah, he it's likes their asses, true. but it never scared me. Fucking scares me. Uh, let's see here. We got some shout outs. Or I'm sorry, listener picks. Do carnies. Uh, Jason Brown. Over nuclear war. <laughs> Nuc- nuclear war scares me. There you yeah. go. Documentaries scare me more than uh, <laughs> <children> <laughs> movies. I'm telling you, you were a bowl of cherries growing up, weren't you? Uh, because uh, it's. I'm sorry, but I don't see where the scare from these movies. Like, Anyways. like when the movie's over. I don't see why you're still scared from it. Anyways. Other than a Steven Tyler You know what? You get to elf. pick the top five next week. Uh, okay. It just means top five we have week. better imaginations. Yes. 
and I don't know, we were regular kids. Anyways, <laughs> no. Nope. So, well, honestly, I was asking my dad. My dad's like, "Why the hell are you even coming up with this?" What the? I said, "Okay, you know what?" I, he's like, "What? What? What kids are scared of movies?" I'm like, I don't know. Apparently, Jason. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. You know, actually, this is all part of Jason's therapy. <laughs> this yeah. is what the psychiatrist told him. This is what Lenny told him to come up with. <laughs> uh, Jason Brown, director extraordinaire. Yay! The great JB! He has, without question, the answer to this question is Predator. Unfortunately, then I responded <laughs> back to him and said, That's a kid's movie? He goes, Yes, I should read all your questions, the whole question first. <laughs> My apologies. Well, you know what? He's he's directing. He's busy directing. So, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And we need to bring him back on, by the way. Oh, yeah, he, so. he has an open door anytime. He must All be right. much younger than I thought he was if Predator was a movie when he was a kid. Oh, I don't know. Uh, here we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have Chris Richardson said, Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. The fucking child catcher scared the ever-living shit out of me. Still does. I it probably is a scary child movie because I've never seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. The cover I, scares me. I know the car flies. I and, always thought it was cool. And it was written by Ian Fleming. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's That's see right. here. Um, precursor to uh, <laughs> Casino Royale. <laughs> it's a prequel. Uh, Besotted Geek had The Secret of Nim at number five. Didn't scare me. I yeah. loved Secret of Nim as a kid. I was too old for that movie. Number four, Labyrinth. I could see how that could be scary. Uh, I was a preteen when that came out. Yeah, I was too old for that. I mean, although David Bowie does kind of freak you out a little bit. David Bowie was cool. Not he was that the ultimate movie. cool. Yeah, he was. No, he wasn't. The Goblin King. Yeah. See, they're remaking that with Savage Garden as the his role. Savage Garden. <laughs> <laughs> but both of them. Yes. <laughs> Goblin King and Queen. Ah. Uh, number three, Gremlins. I could see that yeah, as a that kid. I was more funny than anything else. I did too, yeah. but I but, but see yeah, it. You know, I was too old probably yeah. for that. Number two, Ghostbusters. That is a good one. The 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 movie did uh, not scare me until uh, the the ghost in the zombie. library kind of freaked me out right at the beginning. Yeah. And then yeah, the dogs at the mm-hmm. end. That was kind of creepy. The, the, the movie didn't scare me until they started shitting in the sinks. Yeah, it's true. It's <laughs> true. It's true. Everybody loves a shit in the sink. That's right. And then it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> and number one, peace out of geek. Good job. E. T. Fucking horrible movie. Fuck. Oh, it's not a good movie, but... If anybody can defend that movie, I want to know why. They played Dungeons and Dragons. Did they? Yeah. At the very beginning. Yeah. It's still fucking awful. And and, and he uh, insulted his friend or called his brother penis breath. I thought that was funny. Okay, moving on. (laughs) Like, in front of his mom, and he's like, penis breath? And she's like... Be children, behave. See, and nowadays, I'm like, you can say that in a PG movie. Wow. <laughs> uh, that's our episode this week. You can catch us on nerdly.co.uk. Good day, mate. Uh, you can Hello, big guys. Uh, iTunes, Tangent Bound Network, uh, on Danger Entertainment Network, uh, WeBeGeeksPC.com. They have a lot of great things as well. All of them do. Or you can catch us where you're listening to this episode at. Yes. And also Google Play, YouTube. Everything else, so thanks. we're everywhere. You Geek Life Radio, us. 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central, every Friday. And bad idea of the week is uh, number 8982. 8982. Okay. Savage Garden taking the place of David Bowie in the Labyrinth remake. <laughs> uh, number 17 is Prinder. <laughs> <laughs> Only 17? I Rogers. thought that was number 66. 69. 69. 69. <laughs> 666. 6669. 6669. Complaints to Jason at graphicnovice.com. Roger says goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. This episode made me feel filthy. <laughs> you are filthy. From walking dead to talking heads, from comic books to TV sets, there's a history of not so bad. There's the history. It's the history of bad. So bad. The history of bad. It's bad. Listening to Hobie. <laughs>